From the Dice Abide Live studios, it's Late Night War Games with your hosts, Adam and John. Hey, Jay. And hello, everyone. I'm Adam, but you know me as the Dice Abide. And I'm John, a.k.a. Wise Kensai. And tonight, we're welcoming back Obadiah Hampton. Yay! 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 Welcome. Welcome. How are you, Obi? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? You're all right. You're all right. It's been a while. Yeah. So a whole new season of ITS. It's uh, like it's like Christmas Day. <laughs> Yay! Happy ITS, everyone. <laughs> well, uh, Obi, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, well, I made myself a dark and stormy with some uh, crack and rum, and uh, so that's what I'll be drinking. Very that nice. Delightful. John. Uh, I am having, I'm trying to finish that bottle of uh, alcoholic tea mix. So that's what's happening <laughs> still, now. Still putting it back. There's a little bit left. So excellent. Well, I am having uh, something I haven't had in a long time. I'm having a Heineken. It was sent by our listener, Grizzly Troll. So cheers and thank you for the booze. Cheers. Right, gentlemen. Bottoms up. All right, John, why don't you take it away with the news? Yeah, let's do it. So we've got some uh, new things Patreon related. Oh, that's right. So you have until the end of the month to sign up to receive this quarter's miniature. The way it works is if you are subscribing from October through December, so the, the entire fourth quarter, at the end of the fourth quarter, we will send you the unauthorized bounty hunter sculpted by none other than Obadiah. Hey, I know that guy. Yeah, right? The um, so he handsome, is Obadiah. Kind enough to uh, sculpt us the SMG acrylic cannon in the style of um, uh, Max Scorpio. There we go. Who all just happens to look like Ryan Gosling from Drive. And yeah, get it. Get it here. It's the only way. And it's a fun looking model. Well done, Obi. Thanks. It's the that's the third variant of that same sculpt. Right. I'm sitting on, what, I'm sitting on all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> this has got them hoarded. Yes. Yeah, like a dragon. Awesome. I'm entering my Bezos phase. I'm just gonna get things and hold <laughs> on to them forever. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, in other news, we have a new Roman Academy mission, which is to take stuff that you ordinarily would take in a fire team out of the fire team. So just to prove to you that the stuff that normally goes in fire teams is still useful out of them. That's basically the rule. You can still take a link team if you want. Just don't just take one thing you normally would take and don't put it in the link team. That's it. That's the that's the what? Uh, yeah. That's, that's it. like pretty easy for Toha players. That's... Yeah, that's pretty easy for Toha players. If you've an L players out there, you want to do that, you can just take something like an Aguasil HMG or a Fusilier HMG, something like that, and run it around the table, see what happens. Maybe it'll be useful. Who knows? Um, yeah, let us know how it went. Send it into Bromat Academy, and we will enter you into a wheel of names spinning to get some stuff and things, like blisters from uh, Mythic Games or uh, Bromat Academy patch, your choice. We've also got a new painting competition with the closeout of quarter three, 2021. Now into quarter four, 2021, we're going to do dioramas. So basically the rule here mm -hmm. is you're still painting one miniature, right? And then you're going to put it in a diorama. It doesn't have to be like super fancy where you like make a plinth and everything. Uh, you can set up some terrain and some other uh, models around it, tell a story. This is a great opportunity to do some biker-themed dioramas, right, with the new ITS-13 spoilers, right? Bikes are our new, uh, new hotness. So uh, paint up something cool, tell a story with it in some kind of Infinity-related environment. Not everything has to be Infinity models, so if you want to include some other stuff from other, from, from other model lines in your diorama, that's totally fine. But the painted model has to be a uh, Infinity model from Corvus Belly. So there's that. Um, we've also got uh, Lumbering Sprocket Mission, which I have not posted yet, but I will do so after the show. Uh, it's going to be testing out the new uh, HGBTS objectives. So we added a couple new objectives to the various, and we shuffled them around in the various uh, combat group roles. So give that a look and try them out, see what you think. Uh, we are pretty excited about them. We want to make sure they're balanced and they make sense. 
Uh, our play testing is ongoing, so we would love to have more data from you as we as we crunch through our own testing. So please, please help us out. Um, we've also got a battle report posted. Uh, myself versus Adam, Nukol versus North. Um, yeah, Volta girls are good. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's it for for blog news. Um, so it went we, well for Adam, is what you're saying. It went very well for Adam. He had he had a he had a grizzly end. It was awesome. Um, I learned the best. <laughs> you learn things. Uh, yep, yeah, but we've also got some fantastic new uh, Infinity releases coming up. Yeah, the, uh, what is that? So the regular release of the Mendoza that looks awesome. I need to have that. Um, and what Saladin? The Saladin looks again also fantastic. Very Dune. He looks right out of the movie. It's also a great uh, conversion, like. Um base for Nandor the Relentless. <laughs> oh, sure. That's perfect. Um, and we've got, yep, the uh, the Fat Bear Week, the uh, the, the Ariadna Beast Pack for Code 1 coming out, <laughs> with the bear code that I am very much looking forward to. The, uh, the 112 by itself on a bike, since they've repacked that support pack. The new Ranging Guard SMG, which looks awesome. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I wonder if they're going to give it a uh, a profile shift to uh, support it having a tank hammer now. Yeah, I mean, they've got, what, an armor-piercing one or something like that? Yeah, just an APCCW, I think. Maybe yeah. DA. But not no, a tank I don't hammer. Think, I don't think that trench, trench hammer. Trench. Yeah, tank hammers are for works. Um, and then the uh, the Nomad remotes, which also look fantastic. Mm -hmm. We're going to need some of those for my Bakunin. Some fancy bases that look good. Yep. The new thermoplast. The one thing with the uh, the remotes that I'm kind of wondering is if they're going to be uh, having the parts for the meteors on in there. Like mm -hmm. I haven't seen any previews of it, but it's you know they've been doing kind of sneaky stuff. You know where they'll throw yeah. in like extra heads and things. But it's also one that they could leave question. and just throw extra parts. Uh, yeah. You know. Doing its own separate kit. But kind of interested if uh, those will be in there. That's a really good question. Those new remotes look so good, though. They do. Look they do. Really nice. And we've also been given the uh, the lowdown on the December releases. So we're gonna have two things that I'm not sure what they are, but it's a, they're both for Code One. One is the Panoceana Collection Pack, and the other one is the Eugene Collection Pack. Is that gonna be like all of the Code One releases for Pano in one go? Like oh, big Christmas convenient. bundles? Yeah, that makes sense. Right in time for the holiday season. Little, Did they already part out <laughs> the Caldstrom ones? I don't, oh, like if they're uh, if they're act, like the action packs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Right. Yeah, because I, I thought Caldstrom was still available. Yeah, I mean, it would make most not... sense for it to be the Caldstrom split, but they haven't previously called them collection packs. They've called them um, action packs. I mean, right. it could be it so, could be somebody mistyping. Yeah, or mistranslation or something else. Yeah. Um, yes. So also, we're coming out the uh, the tiger creatures. Yay, more tiger creatures! A Psychops marksman rifle, which is the correct Psychop, and the Yi Mao hacker. Mm -hmm. So, a Yi Mao hacker looks pretty cool. I think they showed a preview of it a while back. Yeah, all the Yi Mao so, have been pretty neat. I'm a big fan of yeah. all of them. Some useful toys. Yep, and you can get all of those toys at Mythic Games. Uh, you can stay tuned to Facebook for the announcements when they're all available. So those are things that you can look forward to. Uh, other things that are available now, you can go grab Ankh from Board & Brew Games. They just got a big shipment. Oh, in. right. Um, so you can go to boardandbrew.games uh, and go to their web store, we pick go. stuff up if you're interested. Also, if you are looking to get your hands on some Moonstone um, and pay US shipping prices, <laughs> you can Hallelujah. you can go uh, help PJ <laughs> empty his shelves over at Board and Brew. So yeah, he just things. got a massive restock. Yep, which means the Gnomish airship is mine. Finally, yeah, nice. I know, right? I'm kind of, I'm kind of waiting to start painting on them because I, I like having it all at once so I can make sure it's cohesive. Um, it's only ten models, so I'm looking forward to digging into the gnomes. They look fantastic. <laughs> PJ yeah, asked that they, you make sure he can't buy any for himself. So help right, him out. Scoop it all up so he doesn't. Uh, let's uh, see what else. Um, oh yeah, we've got some some new Blood Bowl sculpts from Bunga. 
or I guess oh, more, right. so, more uh, of the Plague Carnival sculpts have been released. Yep. So this is the uh, the second part of the release. He's actually doing this team over three releases because he's doing all the support staff um, and everything in here. So this has uh, the third of the the big guy, the third of the Chaos Warriors, another pest or two more Pestigores, um, and then some of the Rotters. Just such a really cool, crazy team. I really like these stills. I was actually funny thing. I was gonna I was gonna cancel Punga because I just I mean all this stuff is amazing, but I have so many Blood Bowl teams. Um, and then when he showed off this team, I was like, well, I'll let it go a little longer. <laughs> that Chaos uh, Chosen is fantastic. Oh, yeah, with the masks? Yeah, the three masks. I, I don't know why. I really like the strongman with the um, with the dumbbell, or not dumbbell, uh, kettlebell. Kettlebell. Or, and the kettlebell has a face on it. I, something about that just reminds me of like old 80s GW. Yeah, that's pretty fun, too. And yeah, it's totally the Carnival of Chaos from Mordheim feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> Gorgeous sculpts. They really are. But that's it for news, I think. <gasps> I like to do games. That's what I like to do. Wrong one. Whatever. It's hobby time. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, let's do games because you did the let's thing. It's happening. It's happening uh, now. Button, you, you did it to yourself. Oh, I a lot of stuff in the programming everybody i saw the panic on john's face so <laughs> so oh yeah john what is this what are these little men's uh this is war master this is this is your your exciting thing that you played with dan as i sort of spectated and heckled that's right dan and i mastered mastered the war um this was a hell of a lot of fun i love uh i really like the warhammer fantasy universe and it has since been destroyed and pooped on and rebirth into something that I, I don't enjoy as much. But uh, War Master has a very strong, thriving community, especially uh, thanks to 3D printing, making it possible to print out full armies. Um, you know, and since each model is only you know, a half an inch tall, they print really quick on a resin printer. So Dan and I were able to throw down a thousand points of dwarfs versus wood elves. Classic bitter rivalry matchup. Um, it was a hell of a lot of fun. You know, the the combat is really, uh, it gets really abstracted down, right? Warriors just roll like four up to hit and the other person takes the armor save. Um, but it what it ends up doing instead is puts a lot more emphasis on your command of the army before you get into the fight, right? Because at this scale, like the difference between like a, a dwarf hammer and a, a high elf greatsword is uh, doesn't matter. Yep. Like when you've got ten thousand of them versus ten thousand of them, it's like it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant, yeah. Um, so if you like Warhammer Fantasy and like the maneuvering game that that Warhammer Fantasy was, this game puts more of the emphasis on the maneuvering. Um, and then it has like a cool command system where basically your heroes are kind of little individual models scattered about in your back lines, um, and they give orders to your units, but. The more orders they try to give, the more likely they're to fail giving orders. And once a unit stops receiving orders, it just kind of stands there. It's really good. Um, it's a, yeah, it is a really pretty fantastic game. I was impressed with how quickly we picked up the rules. I'm sure we got a million things wrong, but given the fact that it's a you know GW rules from the '90s, uh, it felt pretty <laughs> pretty intuitive for being that. Yeah, it was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I played a few turns on Dan's behalf just so I could be part of the fun too and be included. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I went out pretty much that evening and bought a bunch of stills to print out a Japanese-themed Skaven army. Um, yep. So there's actually a guy, Cromarty, I think, right? Cromarty Forge yeah, Cromart that makes a Japanese-themed Skaven army, but also like he made a bunch of extra sculpts. Uh, and there's a fan... Um, like samurai ninja army for war master the nippon. the nippon yeah so uh i basically paid once and got two armies so seems pretty good i'll, I'll do that i just gotta get i just gotta get dan to uh to print them out for you yeah i'm i'm sure it'll be fine and i'm already on to you so i i did dwarves to start with again like against the recommendations of everyone um everyone's like don't start with dwarves they don't have a magic phase. You're missing out on an entire aspect of the game. Right. And your job is to sit there and wait for the enemy to come to you. And 
They're like, like the I hard tried... counter to Skaven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like I tried to like run out there like and engage and play part of the game. It's like, no, the correct thing would have been me sitting back and waiting for the stupid elves to get to me. Yeah. Um like you like, should have like, tell... so there's a there's a bunch of cannons in the top corner of this image that should have just shot at the elves as they advanced. Right. I should have I should have I should have dwarfed properly, but no, I tried to uh I tried to be fancy. Yeah. So I'm going to see if he can uh, print me out the Bretonans instead, which I got all the Forest Dragon Bretonan STL files, and they're gorgeous. Yeah, dwarves have a cannon phase. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone else has a magic phase. Dwarves have the cannon phase. No, it was it was really good. And yeah. they, yeah, such great little sculpts, though, from Cromarty. It's, so. it's, it's very much a positioning game, right, what you were saying, so. Yeah, it, it, the thing is, it feels like old Warhammer Fantasy to me. It's yeah. like Warhammer Fantasy was really your, the the game, like half the game was over when you were done with deployment. You could absolutely have lost the game in the deployment phase alone. So it really heavily emphasized that. It's maybe less reliant on deployment in this because units can be surprisingly fast, but you have to risk giving them a lot of orders to move them into a better position. Sure. So it's... It's nice. Yeah, recommend it. We'll probably... Like, we'll do we'll an definitely... episode on it at some point, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Once we get a, a few more games under our belt. Yeah. Obi, did you get any games in? Uh, yeah, I actually did a tournament out in Sacramento um, run by a Hobby Badger uh, on Saturday. Uh, so I got three games of uh, Infinity in. I was kind oh, of nice. running, running a little bit of a more casual list. I uh, just was running Toha, but with all of the uh, mercenary units that Toha can get, which is mm-hmm. uh, comes out to exactly, or what I built came out exactly to 200 points uh, of that, <laughs> of, oh, just, uh, of mercenaries. And uh, I think it was a full 10 models. Um, and then just filled it out with some other stuff. Um, I don't think it did well in any of the missions. Uh, the first one I won because uh, my opponent just, both of us were just rolling crazy high dice, like not just for armor saves, but also to hit. So he'd be hitting me on 15s and not hit because he rolled too high. And, mm. you know, I rolled a 20 for my reaction. So we just whiff on a lot of things. But oh uh, it was, it was uh, still pretty fun to, to put them all on the table and, uh, try and do something with them. Yeah, you, I mean, you finished your Toha army. How many of us can really say that, right? Like, they finished a whole army of painting, especially as the army grows, and all your conversions and custom work. It's a big yeah, that's, the, just... that's the one thing that's nice about Toha being, you know, the the one upside to them being discontinued was that I could, oh, sure. you know, <laughs> wasn't constantly <laughs> getting, a, you know, an inflow of new models every, right. you know, two or three months. Exactly. That's funny. And totally true. I mean, they don't even get like you know they didn't even get uh like the you know fiddler didn't join them you know they don't get the any of the uh the regular mercenaries that a lot of the human factions get so you did get some of the defiance characters thrown in there yeah yeah we got we got kindrat and we got uh Jan Star. i was glad that they added kindrat that was uh, a recent addition yeah that's pretty fun <laughs> very cool yeah John, you got a game. I did. I played a game of uh, Supplies with Eric, a.k.a. Zelpanethus, of uh, Are You Worthy fame, for those of you who go all the way back to the beginning of Tabletop Throwdown. Um, yeah, the game is called Ajax Strike instead of Alpha Strike. Uh, spoiler alert, Ajax does a lot of work. Um, I'll let you read the battle report when I, when I, uh, when I publish it probably next week. Um, but basically, my list was Hector, Akmon, a uh, pair of Thorakites, or Thorakitai, however you're supposed to say it, uh, Agima, Missile Launcher, Ajax, right? And then Phoenix and two Myrmidons, one's a hacker, and uh, just like a flashball spot. Um, yeah, Eric took a list that I sort of made for him, then he changed a bunch. Uh, he's playing White Banner, so three Gwilang Mine Layers, a Gwilang Hacker, a bunch of bots, specifically the um, Son Bay. He's, he's all in on the missile trick. Right, so then his he's got a main link in his second pool, which is a, which is Shang Jesus, uh, Tian Gao, uh, two Zanshi hackers, and the lieutenant, and then a couple Shaolin just to round everything out. So, um, 
it looked like it was going to be a pretty standard game of supplies, and then turn one happened, and at the end of turn one, sorry, the end, sorry, at the at the bottom of turn run, this is what he had left. Um, so he went from 299 points to 149 points uh, at the bottom of turn one. So uh, Gross. did not go very well for him, as you can imagine. Uh, shockingly, though, what we ended up doing was we we spent a lot of time discussing all of his options and working through all the various problems on the table. Oh. Um, and it got to be pretty close. I mean, it was, it was, he was really fighting for a tie, right? Uh, at the end of the day, or like a, like a, uh, several T like a one or two TP TP loss. Um, but it's important to take that time to think about how you can recover from such a devastating alpha strike. Um, and yeah. so, you know, we actually I go through a lot of detail, talk about a bunch of stuff. And then at the end, uh, the next day, we usually have like a big long text chain about like what we could do. And it's all there. So you can, you can read it and, and, and absorb the lessons that Eric, Eric got out of it. Uh, and I got out of it. Um, so it's a little more of a cerebral battle report. Um, the details are, are not that exciting. There weren't any too many tactical blunders, right? Uh, like at one point, Ajax split burst four ways and killed three things. So that, yeah. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I, like I said, I said later and I was like, I, I was just trying to kill the, kill the missile bot. Cause that was your plan. If I killed the missile bot, I would have free reign of the board. Uh, and I managed to kill half your army literally. And so the dice said I could have my cake and eat it too. Um, but you know, that's not some, you know, Eric didn't make any like crazy mistakes or anything. It was just the dice went super hard my way. And there's a couple of things he could have done a little better and we talked about it. So yeah. Something to something to digest um, when I publish it, probably uh, not this week, but the next. Yeah. Gross. Poor, poor Eric. Yeah. That looks, that looks, that sounded incredibly painful when you messaged me about what was going on with Ajax. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> but Eric, I, I think most people would have just been like, all right, I'm done. But Eric was like, no, let's, let's finish this out. I really want to to think through, think this through and try to figure out a way out of this. And we really spent a lot of time thinking about it. There were some, some obvious things that uh, looked good, uh, turned out to be a mistake. We re rewound time a little bit. Um, so mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I am a bad man, Frank. Like those are kind of fun to do though, right? Like yeah. it, is, it is enjoyable to fight yourself out of a bad situation. Um, and you know, if, if you're hanging out and having fun with a friend and it's like, well, We've already signed up to play this game. Like, let's not call it now and have everyone go home. Right. Let's exactly. So to answer um, Jordan's question in chat, how did he get past the repeaters? Well, the repeaters were covering both objectives, and Ajax started on the on the table edge, uh, and so I snuck through on the side and destroyed that flank. Um, I held I held <laughs> Ajax and the Agima missile in reserve, so because I was going first. I mean that's the real mistake, letting Steel go first. <laughs> yeah, right. Steel is I love Steel Phalanx. Are you enjoying them so far? I am really enjoying them. Uh I got called out in the Infinity Global Lead mod chat. Uh somebody said, You are a coward if you do not play this list. So he sent me this this meme list, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play it the next time. So whoever whoever I inflict that on, I apologize in advance. It's pretty silly. But we shall see what <laughs> it's, happens. It, it is really silly. I look forward to that battle report. Yeah, it's going to be good time. absurd. Oh, my goodness. So, let's see now here. Now it's hobby now. time. Now, here we go. It's hobby time! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Obi, what have you been painting? Uh, so, I've been working on some more Defiant stuff. So, i got the uh, Cadmus and Seed Soldiers that I'm working on. And uh, nice. that is them there. I got uh, going to be doing just one more wash over the uh, armor, like the red armor bits, and uh, then can start working on some of the other parts. So pretty close. I mean, they, one thing with this color scheme that's nice is that it's uh, it's only a couple of colors. Mm -hmm. It's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. It looks gorgeous, though. The, the, at least the I really like the um, I don't know what you would call that the like synthetic muscle. Sure. Yeah, whichever it is. I mean, it's very confusing because like the uh, Jade have it and they're painted it where it's just like their skin. So maybe that's it's all skin tight and that's what their little bodies look like uh, under all the armor. 
Who knows? Right? Like, aliens. Weird alien physiology. Aliens. We can only we can only pretend to know what this pretend thing is supposed to be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then I put together Vostok, uh, which was interesting. You know, I it's the uh, the new thermoplastic. So yeah, what did you think? Um, mine came. It looked like it was it was pretty good. There's, I feel like um, the probably the biggest issue is that you have to do have to be more careful with the cleaning up of the flash uh, and mm. you know mold mines and things like that because. You can't just hit it with a, uh, you know, with your file. You actually have to kind of slice it off. Uh, so you it's a little bit slower. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know that it's necessarily all that much longer, but it's a much more careful process. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can see that. You know, you you actually have to do it delicately. You can't just kind of scrub it almost. Yeah, uh, the pewter miniatures are a bit more resilient to. Um, to, to kind of manhandling vigorous, it. vigorous handling yeah and i found that uh i was using like a 400 to 600 grit uh sanding sponge mm -hmm. and that seemed to help clean up some of those areas but there are some some little areas that i was a little annoyed with like the that's got kind of like a almost like a winch in front of its uh face and oh, yeah. just kind of having to like clean out each little divot with a oh. hobby knife is yeah. a little bit difficult. And I'm not Time sure if it's, me. yeah. And I'm, I'll probably have to clean it up some more once I actually get it uh, uh, primed uh, so that I can actually see how sure. it looks. Um, but sense. overall, I think it was, you know, it's, it's just a different process um, and I will say for the record that I do prefer metal, but sure, this is, this is what we got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't think. I mean, at least not off the bat. I don't think anyone's gonna be like it's gonna be like, oh, I prefer, but maybe. Um, yeah. I think it is more that if you if you approach it from the angle of like they have to replace the 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 pewter with something, what is an acceptable replacement? And I I feel like it works fine for that um, yeah i prefer the pewter but i also you know am fine with models not continuously raising in price as metal price fluctuates yeah i mean if yeah, you if you right now. if you frame it as like they do this or they go out of business i i feel like most of us would be pretty okay with that yeah yeah well cool let's see here at uh, john i think and then i also got a fiddler oh, oh. We got a fiddler. Yeah. With more and, thermoplastic uh, jackpots. Yeah, those actually both came out really nice. So it was, uh, I, I think with the smaller things, they might have more control. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to see how, you know, other people's came out. Gotcha, gotcha. What's going on with the little, like, paper code things? Uh, so little uh, little newspapers blowing up. Oh. You know, they're zooming back. Made the one jackpot. I, I tilted it back because it's going so fast. Oh yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's something I've been doing on my bases for for quite a while now. For my uh, NA two stuff, mm. just cutting up bits of paper to make. Um, I've done it to make blankets on things. I've done it to do uh, like you. If you fold it in half twice and then flatten it back out, it gives you the creases like a newspaper. Yeah, that's that's what I did for all of my newspapers on like my Toha. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've been kind of porting that over here too uh for all of my stuff that's going to be in this city table once i actually build it and uh i've done a few few uh like headlines <laughs> or like uh you know title page uh ones mm -hmm. like, yeah the, the, the city the table with the monument to man's hubris how many how many floors did you get for your brutal city's <laughs> objective room I think it's going to be seven. Are you serious? Jeez. Yeah. Or no, it comes with two. I bought one. And then because uh, the, 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 the floor to, or the ceiling or roof table is actually like one floor high. Um, but I don't think there's mm -hmm. there's anything in that. So it's like six. Uh, how tall? Do you know how tall that's going to be roughly? Yeah, it's going to be a uh, hundred and... Or sorry, one thousand one hundred and seventeen uh, millimeters high. 
Uh, so about a little under 44 inches. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's that's it's got a little little uh you know like maybe six inch or four inch uh, antenna so that's what really puts it over yeah the edge. you really gotta okay all right just making so, making okay, sure we know where the extra height is coming from vertical gaming table here what's that i said are you um are you planning a vertical game table here i mean it's more just because uh, i'm one that Fifty dollar or uh, eighty U.S. or uh, Australia dollar bucks uh, of Brutal Cities at Rose City Raid. So I was like, well, I already have the Brutopolis Tower. Right. So I'll just get some more <laughs> levels for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's actually that might be taller than Jean. Like she, she yeah. was just barely tall enough for the roller coasters. It, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think it is. I was telling. Um, Telling my sister that you know, I don't have a child, so I will I will, I make, will make my one. my my tower be taller than Adam's child. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> that's hilarious. I'm looking forward to seeing this uh, one day assembled. Yeah, yeah. Right. one one day is the keyword. <laughs> Goodness. Right. Well, I have I have. Did a thing. I did a thing after not doing many things for many weeks. I finally finished painting my Grenzer. Uh, it is fine, and I'm satisfied with it enough to move on to the next thing. So, yeah, looks great. Yeah. It's good enough. Um, yeah. Yes, it's it's a Grenzer. It grenzes things. It grenzes things. It grenzes even better now. I mean, it it does grenz things even better now. All the, all those sad bikers that just got their mimetism. Yep. It's 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 Grenzer, but is it is it Grenzist? I don't know. It also ignores their new no, cover. So L O L O L your new cover. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> At least they still get the armor buff for it. Right. There you go. Adam's Mavericks can still be like, I'm arm six. <laughs> Shoot me with a sniper rifle. I don't care. Dude, it like, like, it'll be fine. Let's not get too far off onto that tangent because I could talk about how excited I am about bikes for Quite a while, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, back to some heavy gear. Yes, yeah, so I did some hobby stuff. I built some. I built some more mans. Um, so uh, first, actually, on the bottom, I built four of John's Lanciers, which are the new coal mountaineering unit. So they're a bunch of guys, basically with climbing plus. And one of the cool things about the Lanciers specifically is they're one of the few things in the game that has a react capable rocket pack which is what those big like pepper boxes are that the one on the far left and far right have uh leveraged up on their shoulders so those are both medium rocket packs that they can walk around and shoot because they're in their hands uh, the the one front and center uh, kind of a little bit to the right is the the leader has the leader head on it but most importantly it's firing both of its climbing hooks directly forward with its shotgun and it's kind of like the big fuck you to wherever it is whatever yep. is right there exactly um i love it and the one in the back there has a giant flamethrower. So they seem kind of neat. John, are you looking forward to playing them someday? Yeah, I'm very very much looking forward to playing them because I want to use the linked medium spike guns? Yeah, the linked medium spike gun. With and I think they have one? a point of draw. So that's yeah. what, 5d6? Five, five that's three. Oh, four for linked. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. It's Oh, yeah, you're right. It's four. It's four. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Still pretty great. That's That's still pretty gross. I'm so having a handful of those just come up and yeah, impale people with spike guns. Um, and then above it, so kind of toying with putting together a, uh, a small militia army for South. Uh, so at least one of us is playing South. And I was digging through. I bought a bunch of the Heavy Gear Arena miniatures a while back to make duelists for Kato when I thought I was going to do Kato. And instead, I've just turned them into cool, cool looking regular gears. Uh, for the south. So on the left, that is the long fang black adder with the linked medium rocket pack. And then on the right is another guy with a linked medium rocket pack, which is the uh, long fang mamba. Mm. And that was the, the, the razor fang. So he's the commander. I like how comically small the, the guy on the head, like his head, is on the left. Yeah, right. It's pretty great. That I really like the I really like that model. Just the little the little ball with like three lenses sticking out of it. Right. Yeah. It's like it's it's armored. That's that's the intent. Those things are stupid armored too. They're yeah. really tough. So 
Yeah, those are fun to whip up. And then I also have been fiddling with a fiddler. So this is my... Uh, no, we have not gotten to ITS 13 yet, November Mike. We're just getting through the news and hobby. So, um, yeah, this is my fiddler. And like Obi, I wanted to give it a sense of motion. So I used some tiny resin cans that I got a while back and have them like up on and flying past as she zooms by on her fancy hoverboard. Um, and then to to give it even more of that that same feel, I cut small squares of paper to make small pieces of litter, then curled them and have them then glued off of the can and then another piece of paper glued off the, uh, yeah, and one of them has been run over, good eye. Um, and then another little piece of paper off that. So it looks like a bunch of paper, you know, flying back as she goes through. Oh, so, Frank, Frank has the, the, the real question. What's what's front facing? No idea yet. And I don't have to worry about it until I paint her, but it's got marks on the bases already, thankfully. I guess I guess the direct forward, the direction of the hoverboard. I'm thinking you know, it's like the um, it's like the Aragato biker that's literally firing behind it. And you're like, do I yeah, drive right? the motor- like, which way is this pointed? Yeah, do I drive the motorcycle backwards, or do I just pretend that he can't really shoot that way? Mm-hmm. But it's a rad model. I I did the insane thing and pinned the tail, um, which I don't recommend in the future. <laughs> yeah, I I did that too, but I only really pinned it probably until like the like ring around the tail. <laughs> like I didn't go very very deep into it because I was like, this is gonna go poorly <laughs> yeah it's the so diameter thin. of the tail is really small so trying to pin into it is very difficult what i do because i'm not as cool as these two is i will generally generally drill the connection point into the body deeper than it is sculpted and then insert more of the tail into the connection point to make a like a shallow channel for it to go into uh that's what i've done for like basically all of the antipodes like the um the cuna Uberfall commando uh, Bran when he still had a tail before I stepped on him in a tournament, things like that. So yeah, so tail becomes pin, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about doing that, but she has kind of a ring and I didn't want to destroy that. Like, you know, or like a seal, I guess. I don't know what it's supposed to be exactly, but try, try to leave the model as intact as possible um, mm-hmm. while making the tail a little bit more secure. Yeah. So I, I see a lot of people with broken tails in the future. Yep. The, <laughs> just, you one, just got to make it The glaring problem with the mini, right? It's just the logistics of putting it together. Yeah, yeah. If they gave it a, a, a deeper peg, it would have been fine. But, I mean, it's still a gorgeous miniature. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So uh, that's, all, that's all that I've been working on. Yeah. Nice. Oh, we already did games. We did. Which means it's time for the Mythic Games sponsorship. Woo! MOE Games every week provides one of our lucky listeners with $10 in credit to moe-games.com. All you have to do for your chance to win is to listen to us and hang out live and chat and say the magic word that Obi is going to say right now. Elsa. Elsa? What? Well, it's ITS 13. It's Frozen Road. I was thinking, let it go. I can only say one word. Else, uh, yeah, uh, there you go. There we go. I, I got it immediately. So, wow. No, that one, that one was hard for me. I apologize. <laughs> you you got to cut yourself off from the Heineken's. <laughs> I've had half of one and I just, it, it's probably because like I have actively avoided letting Jean watch that movie too much. <laughs> oh, sure. There you go. I think she's, you know, once, and then I'm like, I would never like to hear her sing that song again um all right john go ahead and hit the button hey raymond 4009 yay congratulations all right I'll go ahead and uh find you in this thing here where was your name i'll find it in a second and shoot you a message and let you know how to collect your prize mm-hmm. so with that said it is now finally time to talk about the new season. Without further delay, it's time for the main event. Or did I just do that out of order again? Because I just scroll down and 
Son of a... Yep, okay. So, never mind. John. You got more to do. You got more we to do. do. It is it is it is labeled feature in the show notes. I'll I'll give you a pass here. We're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, the the painting contest that just closed. So uh, we asked you to submit some conversions, and we got fourteen submissions. Conveniently the same as the time before that, which made the templating for my thumbnail very easy. Thank you, everyone. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, we got some fantastic conversions. So we're just going to go through, give a little bit of feedback when we can um, to show off people's hard work. Uh, if you are watching this right now and you haven't posted your stuff to your own social media or wherever you'd like to send it, feel free to do so. You can, you can basically do that as soon as I post the gallery. So uh, yeah, knock yourselves out. If you want to paste, post more stuff, do the thing. Uh, we've got a bunch of um, uh, submissions from uh, Spanish language countries, right? So thank you to... Um, Rene over at War Garage uh, for for hooking us up with his Spanish language translations of a lot of Adam and my con uh, and my content. Uh, so thank you to yeah. him, and we'll just go through go through all the stuff that we we got submitted. So I guess what I'll do is I'll sort of show the conversion first when people sent like a lot of people sent in their conversion uh, unpainted just so we can see like what's going on behind the scenes. So I'll show that first. Um, and so basically what um, Eduardo did here was he took uh, Domovoy from the um, Outrage character pack chopped it up and turned him into a dog face mid transition, right? To, yeah. to, to Wolfman mode, which I think is super cool because it requires a lot of cuts, um, a lot of green stuff, as you can see here, right? So he basically chopped a bunch of different miniatures, put them all together, uh, green stuff, some fur exploding out of like uh, the various um, connection points to sort of hide the cuts, which I think was very clever. And we end up with this beautiful, um, rendition of a, of a of a guy turning into a wolf like mid transformation, which is pretty rad. Yeah, it's pretty great. I like that one a lot. Yeah, it's a great conversion. Yeah, so great paint job as well, right? Skin tone is excellent. Um, the green is very nice, uh, picking out all the various different details and all the straps, um, like the boot laces, right? Like people, people, a lot of people would have just painted those like straight up brown, called it good. Um, but yeah, all kinds of all kinds of great detail. Put it on a nice plinth as well uh, to give it mm -hmm. some sort of setting, some some snow snow terrain there going on uh, to really let you know what's going, what's happening. It's cold, right? And maybe maybe he had some advanced information about ITS thirteen. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, great job. Okay, then we've got Igor, right? And so uh, his, you know, I I, I essentially said that uh, if you're not Obadiah. Right, we don't have to have like a, a world class conversion here. We're just judging you on your paint. So, um, you know, Igor made sure to check with me to make sure this is okay. This is the scar, the bootleg Scarface. He added a gun, um, which is you know not the the most ridiculous conversion, but I would say that his paint job is extremely well executed, right? As as it so often is for him. So we've got him uh, punching, you know, gribbly alien man in the face. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I've always loved this model. It's one of the ones I need to paint it among many other things, but um, yeah, well done with the paint. I really like the, the, the pasty pale Shaz Vasti. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that touch. A lot of people make him kind of look like green and slimy. I, I really liked this kind of yeah. gross. Like I don't want to, I don't want to touch it. It looks like a worm. Yeah. I also really like what he's done with the, uh, I guess the tank top, right? How it's all like gross and sweated to him. Yeah, right? yeah. Which I think is, yeah. It's like it look. You look at this and you're like, wait, what's going on? Oh, you're like, oh, it's the tank top that's like all like caught up on all of his rippling musculature, right? So, pretty rad. Yeah. Excellent work on the hair, of course, and then just like the detail on Scarface and all the battle damage and uh, you know crack stuff where it got got uh, beat up and the the chopped up uh, like artificial muscle or whatever. Really, yeah, really nice. Also, you know, like the uh, the Scarface logo uh, on oh, yeah. the shoulder pad. Yeah, it's all you know shot up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, hard to do that kind of stuff on an irregular surface. Uh, make it make it look recognizable anyway, right? So I think that's a really good job there. And then just like the the small details, like the bluing on the gun, very nice. Uh, you know, it, it looks like it belongs there. It was part of the whole thing, which is the point of conversions, right? So. Yeah, the only only thing I would is uh, say is that I'd like to see some uh, closer up of you know like some more detail shots maybe. 
Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, I think that's, that's true for a lot of people who submit, right? It's hard to remember to do the framing. Uh, so what some people have been doing is taking up up close photos or you do a split on some particular part of the detail, uh, which I really appreciate. Yeah. Uh, and Jordan, you did make the front page. You are, you are right here on the top, right? I just couldn't update the <laughs> Facebook one because I posted it before, um, uh, before you got yours in, uh, but you did make the judging. So everything's good. Um, we got yeah. you. Yeah, we, don't worry. We got Luke, who uh, who did a Sonic themed conversion of the Karakuri box. So <laughs> that was I. I definitely had to uh, stop and have a chuckle at this. It's a gotta go fast squad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Sonic yeah. knuckles and tails. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean it's... like it's you you wouldn't think to do this with the Karakuri, and I gotta say right like immediately recognizable as to who they are. Like very characterful, like just just the mm -hmm. like the you know the victory like chain rifle pose is perfect for Sonic, right? It's like yeah. I got here, yeah. I'm going really fast, chain rifle to the face, it's fantastic. Well, and doesn't it at the beginning of Sonic Two he do the the peace sign? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I I mean that if I had to guess, that would be where the where the uh, uh, inspiration came from. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right, November Mike. Like it's it's very hard to photograph minis. It's it's a it's a art in and of itself. Um, there, I did link a, uh, a, a mini photography thing to um, to the current competition, right? But just just a few a few like quick uh, tips for those of you listening who want some advice on how to to do it uh, if you're going to submit this quarter, right? So uh, it's great that it's on a plinth. We don't need to see the plinth, right? You can just crop literally just Scarface and like this. This is a you know a great example. I'm not trying to pick on Igor here. Uh, but we want to see all the great work you did um, zoomed in. You can also, you know, do do cuts and stuff. I'll show you that when we get there. But yeah, so great job, Luke. Here they are, uh, like right after right after um, the green stuffing, I'm sure, and then um, and then the um, uh, right after base coating. All right, on to Carlos, who has built a Stempler Zond out of a Dakini, which is pretty freaking cool. That is rad. So I didn't, I didn't yeah. catch that it was a, a stempler. I yep. kind of didn't even pay attention. I was just like, this is a cool thing. Yep. So he also, he also yep. made a meteor out of the Garuda, which I love. Right. So he wasn't, he wasn't asking us to judge that, but he was like, look at this other cool thing that I made. I'm like, all right, now you're just flexing on all of us. Um, but yeah, what a, what a so cool like, conversion. So yeah. go back up to the, yeah, go back up to the first picture. Yeah. Like I think that that is a uh, combined e drone head flipped upside down for the torso. Yeah, yeah. It took me a minute to figure out where that part was sourced from, but yeah. Yep, and that yellow cylinder that comes up the back is part of the Q drone HMG. Mm. Yeah, yeah, this is re this is really well done. It it looks it looks correct. Like then they're removing the little X shaped feet for the Dakini and all the the uh, Diva bots and stuff. Right. Yeah. It works really well here. They look like hooves. Um, and then just the color choices really help accentuate everything, right? Like very nicely cohesively tied together. I love the the pink on the piping there. Um, yeah, excellent. What a what a great conversion. And the basing is really nice too. Right. Just look at look at the the nice wear pattern. It like actually looks like concrete or some kind of chipped up surface there, which is really yeah. nice too. So I get, you know, a lot of people uh, do a great job on the mini and then kind of phone in the base. I, I am one of them, right? You're just like, oh, I don't know. The base seems like it's gray. Gray seems good. Um, but this is, this is a very nicely executed base. Yeah. I like the, um, so part of the way it looks like to me that he paints it is actually over a really strong Zenith with thin down tints of mm -hmm. paint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it creates, Hmm. Yeah, you, you do kind of see that uh, almost like a, a little bit of a speckling in some areas. Oh, yeah. sure, from the from the zenith white. Yeah, yeah. But it creates a really natural feel. Um, it's a it's a technique called, called indirect painting um, when you do it in oil paints. And yeah, I really like how this feels overall. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic conversion. Really, really like. Cool. It. Well done. All right, now we're on to Matt, a.k.a. Matt A. McFly. He's got a Shazvasti conversion here. Uh, so we, he's uh, 3D printed a gun replacement and also put on the camo cloak, right? So we've got our, 
our our guy here. Mm -hmm. Very alien. I think that's that might be color shift paint there. It looks like. Oh, maybe yeah. Right. So really, just just selling the, like, hey, this guy is is not uh, human technology. Uh, very shimmery. Um, it, I really works out well on this this. Uh, I guess is that piece of cloth? It looks like from the other picture. Uh, and then yeah, like that's... working in some some texture with the with the texture paints or I guess sand and and then of course the uh, the tufts of grass. Yeah, I like how it, uh, the cloak is actually going into the base as well. It's kind of like he's very he's very swampy looking. Like you definitely get the feeling that he's just kind of you know rising out of the muck. Yeah, and like there's like crud on the bottom here, right? So it's yeah. like it's marrying it. He's like in there. It's not just like a floating cloak. Right? You're like, ooh, I'm yeah. the stereotypical Halloween ghost. That's just like the sheet over the head kind of situation. No, it was there. It got dirty because it was he was like in camo state and skulking around like a good Shazvasti. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, on to Joe, and he the mighty Joe. Uh, so, uh, if you want to go above and beyond, you can just make a bunch of different profiles, right, to do your conversion, which is exactly what Joe did. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, so these are a bunch of different Tian Gao conversions, along with the um, oh, the mat traps, right? So he's got he's got the yeah it's the it's the I mean of course if he, he picked the uh, the the <clears throat> excuse me the Bostria mini right uh, mm -hmm. and then just like give give him the jammer uh, or you can have the uh, the Red Fury I guess that's the sub four um, and then you've got your your combi rifle uh, and then like I guess hacker hand or something. Um, yeah, great job. And then and then of course uh he likes to do the uh the heavy oranges here, which is a, a nice accentuation. And then of course just like very clean clean paint on all of the cabling. Yeah, really smooth. Nicely done. Yeah, very hard to do properly. And one of the things that is extremely hard to do is to do it on like seven different parts and make it all look like right. the same thing. Right. So that's that's pretty rad too. And then just for fun, he gave us a, a group shot of uh, all of his Starmata, I guess. Which yeah, it's time. a fun group shot. Yeah. I like the, uh, the extra wings that he gave the, uh, is it the cyber, uh, cyber Ghost or whatever it is for uh, ALF? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. of course, Hector's little tip box is always Absara. fun. Absara, yeah. Right. Very good stuff. Okay, and then we've got the king of conversions himself, Larry Carrera. Uh, and so this <laughs> is a uh, unknown ranger conversion, which is super rad. This is, this is so cool. Yeah. So this, yeah. So since unknown ranger ranger showing up in space now, right? He's got to get some more space appropriate gear looking, and the cloak, the gun, it all fits together really nicely to kind of. This isn't unknown ranger. It's some you know, some mysterious figure that you can't see his face under his under the brim of his hat. Right. So secret. <laughs> I I couldn't quite tell if the hat was intentional. If it was supposed to be a fedora. I mean, it's supposed to be a reference character. to the shadow. So. Yeah. OK. So that that's probably the uh, the big white brim fedora then. OK. Yeah. So I wasn't 100 percent sure at first. And then I was kind of like my lady, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Um, the reason why he, he's unknown is everybody just immediately is like, "All right, I'm leaving." <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's great. It's I mean, like, it's yeah. really hard to to paint a model like a lot of the same color palette, right? This is basically like a dark gray black model, um, but the line work or the the edge highlighting work really helps you differentiate. Like, you can see, I think it's a very desaturated palette, right? All of the, um, I, I don't know what you call that, like belts i guess on the back of his his, strap. his okay. straps sure um yeah. yeah so like it just helps break up the outline uh but you, you can see like a lot of uh attention is focused on getting the folds of the cloth right um uh, breaking up all the various like panel lines and stuff to sort of like give you a sense that it's not just like an amorphous black blob with a hat right which it could have been it could have very easily have been that uh but he did a great job of, of breaking it all up and then of course just to to show off all of his um all of his conversions. Here's a group shot of all of his uh, friends with with the shadow, which is a lot of fun too. 
So, so the, I, the one thing that for this that I would think is that it's it's kind of photographed against this kind of charcoal gray oh, sure. background. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like it kind of washes out some of, uh, you know, what you you have there. Like you see it more in the group shot. Like mm -hmm. you see the, the figure better in the group shot because you have those other colors to kind of uh, contrast with what it has. So I think it just in, in the, the single shots, it kind of loses some of that. Uh, yeah. Some of that that depth and character that it, that it really has when it's in that group. Yeah. But I mean, this is this is a great example of like a good crop. Yeah. Right. Like uh -huh, if you want to uh -huh. see, like this is this is just the figure with a little bit of negative space around it, so we can really just focus our attention on it. Um, but yeah, like that's that's that would be helpful. Yeah, like the, just like small things. Uh, off, like one of the hardest things to do is like find an appropriate backdrop, right? Like not everybody just has like a mat for that. Um, but there you go. All right. Uh, good job, Larry. On to David also known as Shingen, right? So here's his, um, uh, the frozen conversion, right? So, so with his... I, I was wondering, actually, I don't know if it is the first, so it, like he might've meant it specifically as the first one, but it was actually a hospital tower body. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He, like, he, well, says, he emailed me and said, this is specifically uh, attached. You'll see pictures of my newly converted father officer, Gabriel de Furzen. I never liked original de Furzen, And when CB introduced a new version, I liked it even less. So he decided to go with his own version. And That's you're absolutely great. right. Uh, it's uh, So he, he gives a list of everything in here. It's a hospitaler body, some 3D printed parts, uh, head and hand from unit nine, and he self-designed yeah. the sword. So the sword and the sheath is his own design, um, which is pretty cool. So oh, lots, of, lots of custom work here. Yeah. That's awesome. This is a really great one. Just the uh, the blending in the shadows, especially on that tabard, is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then just the the blues and where it's catching the light. It's great. Yeah, like a lot. Like I really love just just the. I guess this would be his left leg, right? The first his left yeah. leg is really well done. I think that's a that's a really excellent thing to study if you if you want to learn how to do it well. Uh, it looks really good. Um, and, and we've seen work from David before and, uh, previously, like some of his, his tabard, uh, freehand was, uh, either rushed or, uh, sometimes there were mistakes. So this is significantly improved. One of the fun parts about doing this is you get to see like people improve model to model. And this is a def, mm -hmm. like he's been working through his military orders, uh, uh, over the past couple of competitions. And like, yeah, like this is, this is definitely a, a huge improvement and it looks, looks fantastic. So here's some other views, right? So you can see the, uh, the other freehand that he's done, like on the shoulder pad, like just the the shading work on the gun is excellent as well, right? Yeah, the only thing that could have made this cooler is if he turned the hand upside down and had the red and blue pill in his hands. Oh, sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very, yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Going for that. And and the, the deal with thick glasses, right? Mm -hmm, mm hmm Pretty, pretty excellent stuff. All right. Well, that's, that's David. We've got... Uh, Yosef, aka Moxie, and he's got his uh, Spetsnaz with AP rifle, right? So he's actually he's actually broken down all the various things that he's done, right? So we've got a new, he, you know, you chopped up a sniper rifle to give, turn it turn into a rifle, resculpt the shoulder and arm. Uh, I guess he had a, a really old Space Marine grenade that he threw on there. Yeah. Uh, scratch built a knife, uh, did some tactical rock changes, and then of course he uh, custom sculpted a decharge. Uh, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, he actually did it uh, in like a day because he just, I don't know. So he used, he used, he used the episode like right before this was due as his timestamp. So there you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is done with oil paints, I believe, if my understanding yep. is correct. Um, so wet, wet, wet blending, of course, is, is very, uh, very, I wouldn't, I don't want to say easy, but easier, but like uh, at least significantly more doable than uh, acrylics I'm, I'm given to understand. You guys would know far better than I. So it has a much longer working time, is all. Yeah, I mean that's that's a pretty big deal, though, right? If you're trying to get nice creamy mm -hmm. blends, um, but yeah, for for like, I mean this this would be a great model for me if I spent like a week on it, right? And he did it in a day. Yeah, I, I think the thing that's really interesting about it is kind of when I first looked at it, it almost has a look like it's 
it's got some OSL, like it's standing in front of like a, you know, a big fire that it just caused or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that maybe, you know, you don't really quite see it translate when you start looking at like the back and things like that. But that might be something, uh, you know, to, to think about is like the way that you can use uh, those oils and, and just kind of create a kind of a scenic, uh, uh, sure. you know, piece just, just on its own. Like it's got a, it's definitely got its own story there, which is fun. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great profile too for infinity. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely, it's my favorite specimens for sure. No question. Yeah. That AP rifle is rad. Yeah. All right. On to Nate. So Nate was going, uh, he was trying to bribe the judges by painting me. So yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I don't vote in these things. I, I make sure that I get other people to vote uh, because I don't, I don't want to influence anything. Uh, especially when I talk about it here. So, but yeah, so Nate, Nate uh, turned me into an alpha, which is, which is pretty cool. Your rightful place, John. So you do need so. the hat that, that's like, that's written I, on it. Yeah. You that you're, uh, you know, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> you that's need to say on the back. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, what, what am that's I supposed to be doing? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm actually really impressed with how well the arms swapped on there. Yeah. Pretty yeah, seamless. they actually look pretty good. Yeah. Um, so you can you can see the giant pile of parts that he just like dumped on the base there. So <laughs> pretty pretty straightforward conversion arm swap. Nothing wrong with that though. Looks really good. Uh, and I look I look right uh, right at home next to next to my robot friend. Not that uh, <laughs> not that that I'm trying to say anything about that. In real life but yeah. oh <laughs> but yeah right, no. that's you. great great work uh some of the comments we got from the judges that uh you know the eyes look great uh there's a there's a good shot of a of one of the eyes the other, the other one's a little bit out of focus so um yeah good work nate all right well done buddy on to a vendigo who converted up this uh, marut with wings this Marut is so bonkers. I love it. I love this, especially the, for me, the biggest thing is actually the use of uh, translucent resin to paint the, to print out the wings. I'm not, mm. I'm not sure that's I don't know if they are, because if you look at the, uh, I don't think I they are. No, look, look at the no. background there. There. I. That's great. It looks translucent. Mm. Oh, shoot. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just yeah. the highlighting that really sells it. Okay, right? well, I I am wrong. Uh, I stand corrected. I thought that was translucent, which it really does look like that, right? So to to fool somebody into thinking that's translucent, right, is pretty pretty darn cool. Uh, and this yeah. this is an example of great miniature photography, right? Like contrasting background, tight crop, right, showing off exactly what we should be looking at as opposed to like a big um, negative space around the model, right? So you can, like, I, I don't touch these photos at all. The only thing that's done to them is whatever WordPress does to them when they get resized for the website. Uh, I don't right. crop anything or do anything like that. But yeah, you like, this is a perfect crop, right? Just like right to the wingtips. Fantastic work. Who painted this? Yeah, you can... A Vendigo or Ars, Ars, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. But, and you can also see that in some of them, you know, you're you're getting more of the model, and then some it's a, a little bit of a tighter crop. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you know, like in that, I think that final one that's on the, that one there, yeah. you know, you're even cutting out some of the base. But right. one thing I really like on this one too is you get those little bits of uh, you know reflective lighting off of it. Yeah, I would like to see maybe more of that in the like uh, in the back area. Where you see those wings maybe uh, shining off of the back, but you also oh, in the sure. base that I really liked about this one is the shadow uh, that is cast by this thing. Uh, it's very apparent. It's one of those things that you know you can be easily overlooked in a base, mm -hmm. but just adding a shadow makes your model look like it's there. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, like you can't. And you can even do something simple as just, you know, shining a bright light on it. And that'll kind of give you an idea of where you should have a shadow and, or just do something simple as, you know, as making it darker under the model. Indeed. Yeah. Very cool. That was, yeah, definitely one of, one of my favorites for sure. 
Uh, yeah. Then we got uh, David, also graphic, different David, different model. Um, here we got a Shaz, right? Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, did he give us a? Oh, he did not. He gave us he gave he gave us a glamour shot instead. So here's a here's a nice glamour shot of the of the model itself, right? And so it looks I guess like it's some the, succulents. It's using the uh, the knock one of the Knox bodies from uh, Defiance. And then maybe a spec ops head for uh, the Shaz. Oh yeah, maybe. But that ni knife body with the pistol is definitely a Knox uh, from Defiance. And then he's got uh, the cape. I'm not sure which unit he brought, got that from. Possibly the, the spec ops. And then that also might be where he got that uh, old Shazvasti uh, com uh, combi rifle mm -hmm. he's got on the back there. Yeah, it's pretty rad. I love I love I love the glamour shot too because it tied it in with like the little succulent on his base, with an yeah. actual you know IRL succulent. Yeah, it's it's real spooky. Um, I do like that he put it he put oh, it on a, a three uh, by one. Yeah, a three by one block. Yeah. Um, but mostly actually because that gives me a sense of contrast in the paint. So like, yeah. are the shadows dark because yeah because it's not lit, or are the shadows dark because he painted them dark and in this it's he painted them dark so you did a really good job with that strong zenith mm -hmm. angle on the, the lighting here yeah yeah so and then he also has even just a little bit of source lighting if you look at that uh it, this picture here with the knife you can see that little reflection on the uh, arm guard yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah fantastic work yeah and this is actually a, like another good thing right just to have a, a reference of something that we see every day like a, just a piece of metal, right? Uh, like Adam was saying. So uh, this, is, this is a trick that uh, uh, VFX artists do a lot, right? They just like run run a big metal sphere through a scene uh, when they're shooting. So they have a reference for when they do graphics in mm -hmm. post, specifically to catch like shadow and, and, and light and the various levels and stuff. So very well done. All right. Then we've got Shang Jesus, who is literally walking on water, thanks to Christian, which I thought was hilarious. That's hilarious. And amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty great. It took me a minute to figure out what was going on, then it was like, right. Yeah. I mean, like, you wouldn't you would not have noticed, and you just been like, oh, weird like jello floor. But he he really <laughs> tells you the story by putting the tin bot in the water because the water you know, the tin bot is not yeah. Shang Jesus it does not walk on water like Shang Jesus does so there you go what a what a clever idea and then this no, is this not. is another great example of like uh, things you can do as part of your your mini photography when you're submitting for judging um, like you know we're not gonna worry about compositing or anything it's just like you want us to you wanted to show us uh, specifically right like. What does the tin box look like? What is what is the what is the Shang Ji's head and a close up of all the cabling look like in the chest area, right? So you can show off the things that you're really proud of. Maybe like take a picture of um, uh, like some freehand stuff that you've done. Really zoom in on it and and, uh, and show off the detail, right? So excellent work. And really, if you this what this close up lets you do is it lets you actually kind of see really how nice and subtle the uh, the glow of the eye effect is on there. Yeah. And the the uh, different colors used in both the white and the gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you whites know, whites white. aren't just white. You don't just like go get the white paint and like bloop it onto your palette and then just like brush it on. Like that's not how white works. Yep, and it feels very. It doesn't feel like it's a out of the pot bone. It feels lightened up a little bit to make it feel more ivory. Right. I like. I dig it. Yeah, so good. Right, and here's the here's the whip with the whip photo. All right, we've got Jordan, right? Yeah. Gorgos conversion. This is pretty fun. Yeah, right. Like a sort of uh, comic book shell shaded, shell sh cell shaded style. Blah, blah, blah. And I guess I guess yeah. this must be like yeah. a coiled wire or something. Yeah, it's a coiled wire because I think the Gorg or because the Gorgos kind of has those pack or those I don't know tubings that go into its backpack. Yeah, it's like maybe. Uh... Cool. Yeah, and then all, all the like the little attention to detail on the on the musculature, right? Just putting all the little dots there. We were just talking about pointillism. <laughs> right. <laughs> there you go. It's yeah, and then of course the, the change to the CCW is uh, is pretty rad too. 
What what are the use of the tip of that spear? I'm not sure. It looks like it might be uh, oh. uh I don't think it's a a oh. CD. So you want his tail. Oh, okay. No. There you go. <laughs> Awesome. And then just that's like look, very, look at this uh, base though. That's very Power Rangers right there. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> Green Rangers. Uh, the base tail. is actually it's turned look, into a spear. The base is a really fun touch. Yeah. How oh, it's flat and then painted like mm -hmm. the backdrop. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. I mean, just like the 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 very obvious like comic book highlight and all the various curls. Of the the wire thing, right? That's pretty awesome too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really hard to pull this off. You did a really good job. It looks awesome. Well done. All right. Oop. And then finally, we had somebody send in a bunch of uh, zanshi. They didn't get a chance to paint them, but they wanted to show off their conversion. So here you go. Thanks to nice. KGG for sending those in. All right. And without further ado. Uh, let's talk about who took it away. So our, it was actually a very close thing. Um, our judges uh, had a lot of trouble deciding who was first, but winning with one additional vote was David, yeah. a.k.a. Shingen, with his uh, defers and conversion. So congratulations oh, to David. Uh, it was a, obviously, yeah. as you could tell, a very tough field this time around. Uh, there was a three-way tie until the last couple of votes came in. Uh, and and David walked away with the uh, with the number one slot. So uh, I'll get in yeah. touch with you, and we can talk about uh, what you want for Mantra's makings, and also what blister you want. Uh, and then now we're gonna spin the wheel of names to see who who gets to uh, get a blister from Corvus Belly. So let's let's do this thing. Yeah, exactly, Chad Diversion. All right, here we go. Who's gonna get it? Who's it gonna be? It's a beautiful paint job on that guy. All right. It's going to be Matt, Matty McFly. Congratulations. Yay. Getting the wheel. Congratulations. Of yeah. So thank you everybody who submitted stuff for the competition. Um, fantastic work across the board. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm really grateful that, uh, you know, you, you do all this work and let me sit on it for a quarter and then we get to share it with the world and talk about it on stream right. it's it's really fun to sort of geek out about painting and not just uh the you know the gaming aspect and, and tactics and strategy aspect but talk about the hobby aspect uh with um, adam and and all, all of our, our guests that have done it with us so thank you adam and obi for hanging out but yeah that's it for Brown academy right now now we can <sighs> we can talk about the the real reason we're here put on your jackets it's gonna get chilly <laughs> time for a season road or season red. Wow. Season <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Their team. laughs> the winning. Winning. For the pitch and they just fell right on the face. Yeah, yeah. right. Like this is just can we start the whole episode over. Just begin. <laughs> gotcha. Edit that out, Josh. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can do yeah, it. Just... right? Get on that. <laughs> we definitely need a five second delay, not for profanity, but for stupidity. Yeah, right. <laughs> just bleep bleep out your, your mistake. So it looks like you're swearing and you look cool. No, oh, there we go. Right. Adam, I guess I'll, you'll just have to let it go. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So season 13 is here. Hooray! Yay. We did it. We're finally here. Version 0 .0, 0 of Frozen Roads. I noticed that on the front page. I was like, really? 0, .0? Yep. Um, There are some pretty cool things in here it's it's absolutely going to mix up the meta so let's uh let's maybe start a little bit from the beginning did the tournament point calculation change is that what i'm seeing here it did it did oh the gasp the gasp yeah. indeed so how does it work now well uh change uh -huh. So the, right, the, so the big thing is ties are now worth two. Okay. <laughs> uh, victories also uh, went up as well. So yep. victory is now four points where it used to be three. Yep. Interesting. Uh, but it, I think it was the main change is that it used to be that a 
the best tie that you could get would be equal to a high scoring close loss. Oh, sure, uh, sure, so sure. They've, they've changed that up just so that uh, that tie is worth a little bit more. So it actually kind of get it kind of uh, takes down submarining just a little bit. A little, yeah. Right. Because yeah. a, a loss is you cannot get a loss that counts as much as a as a low win anymore. Or a low tie. A low tie, sorry, yeah. Yeah. So actually I think that I mean that's a small change, but it's good. And it's interesting to me because what this shows me is that they're paying attention to the math. Yeah. Right. They're looking at the math, they're looking at the outcomes and, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe visualizing it and seeing it where they'd be like, huh, we're getting a lot of people with ties that are actually end up placing higher in the tournaments because or losses than they're placing higher in the tournaments. Well, it used to be, I mean, even in a, a, a low scoring game where you lost used to be as much as, you know, you could get a, as much as a tie because it used to only be that, you know, uh, yeah. As long as you were within two points of your opponent, you still got one point, which is as much as a tie gave you. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's, cool. it's still cool. generally hard to get a tie, so it's nice to see that get rewarded. And also the um, the other aspect of this is I think it starts to break up some of the banding we used to see in in some of the larger leagues and stuff that were played right. online, cool. where uh, you end up sort of stuck in your little your little bracket of like where where you sort of end up. In a large, a large group of people, um, so you, you might end up getting to play the same people several times, which is no fun, right? Um, so uh, being able to sort of increase the spread between people as they get more victories or or even ties now helps a lot. So that's cool. Yeah, that's a again, it's it's a small change, but it again it shows, it shows they're paying attention, yeah. which is what I really like. So a few other things. They've added some more uh, modes, I believe. So I'm trying to find that now. But yeah, so uh, Obi, you were saying that they found they got a, a new um, combined deck mode. So that was actually a holdover from last season as well. Oh, was it? Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, I think it's yeah. just, you know, some of the stuff reading through it, I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. And then I was like, looking back at the old document, I'm like, oh, it's oh, just yeah, there you go. Well, clearly, games. clearly, we never used it because we just went straight to red deck. That was that was the big thing. Yeah, right. Like, oh, half of the deck is too easy. Right, right. <laughs> Stick with the correct deck. I mean, there's the there's the training wheels deck, and then there's the the actual deck. Right, it's fine. Yeah. Although, although there is room to you know maybe explore some other spaces with the with the red deck. Right, we've talked about this before. How you know instead of like do the thing twice, maybe do there's some more interesting way you can make it more difficult. Uh, some of them are some of them are cool, right? Like you grant the the target uh, opposed whip roll, right? And some of the, the like the hacking ones or whatever. But uh, like, do, mm -hmm. you know, the the particularly egregious example is like for to observe your HVT and the enemy's HVT twice, and just like, Ugh, why are we doing this? So nobody right. really wants to take that one. It's like I guess I guess you meant secure the HVT once. Cool, I'll do that. But. Well, so shall we get into the the rules that everyone's excited about the the season special rules? Yeah, let's do it. So first up is tactical ride. Mm -hmm. This one, this is amazing. So basically, all motorcycles are getting super awesome. Everyone's on snowmobiles now. Um, so basically, uh, motorcycles are allowed to choose whether or not to be uh, impetuous or not. When you deploy it, so before the reason the booty roll, remember before That's... the booty roll, yeah. But the reason why this is the reason why this is really relevant is because they're allowing motorcycles to claim cover bonuses. Yeah. So you can either have motorcycles claim a cover bonus uh, and not be impetuous, so you lose that extra movement, or you know forego the cover for the uh, for the impetuous, and all motorcycles get mimetism. Mm -hmm. And was it total terrain? Yeah, terrain yes. total. Yep. So, motorcycles in space. That's what I'm hearing. Seems fine. Yeah, I mean, this this is definitely, I think, uh, their way of encouraging more motorcycle play. Right? Oh, yeah. It's like, get more motorcycles mm -hmm. on the table. Uh, they've added, of course, the motorized bounty hunters and all that. I think it'll be pretty fun. I mean, it, it does kind of remind me... Um, a bit of 
kind of when they had like the Alive crew and uh, the Tag Raid, they bring mm-hmm. Scarface, uh, just kind of some of those changes. I mean, I think the the big thing with motorcycles is uh, that that prohibits you know using too many is just that that base size more than anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so really, they need to find a way to to make it so you can give them four deployments too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. Get so the motorcycles have forward deployment just to get them give more space for those 55 mil bases. Yeah, let's bring that back. Um, the mimetism importantly does not stack with other sources, other sources of mimetism. So, Aragato are not going up to negative six. Yeah, uh, Penicillia is not going up to negative nine. Oh man, that would have been rad. Um, no, it wouldn't have that would have been awful. It'd been great for me. I'm playing steel now. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, you're you're just soaked that they got discontinued so you can play them. Um I mean, you gotta make MSD three worth it for some reason, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, no Montes are going to negative six. But still, being able to get that cover bonus is that means that your Argato can actually hit the negative six, right? Yeah. You can also do really fun things like uh now you can cyber mask with Argato Killer Hackers. Yep. Is there That's Petros? probably the silliest thing that can happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty I'm cool. I'm looking forward to abusing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I think I think this is great. I mean, the terrain total is not really to give them more movement; is really just to sort of mitigate the fact that their base is so big, because you can either end up losing a lot of movement because you have to touch some sort of terrain zone, right? Like trying to ride motorcycles on the airplane table, as folks who've been to the RCR and played on it know, right? Is is quite difficult. Because uh, you end yeah. up having to stop a bunch if you don't have terrain skills. But now motorcycles, motorcycles just move through that. And it makes them a lot zippier and, and makes them feel like they look, which is great. Um, and uh, just lets you use that movement uh, in, a, in a game well, especially that's really about positioning. Where you have those, uh, you know, we'll talk about them. But, you, you know, last season we had the localized deep compression, which also... Sure. Or even more, you know, difficult terrain that they would have to navigate, and it usually was in the only spot that they could really zoom through well, anyways, because it had to be not overlapping with any other terrain. Right. Right now, instead of instead of slowing them down, they're like those Mario Kart speed uh, boosters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So speaking of that, uh, that decompression zone that's changed a bit. So now instead of a zero G zone. It is a, what is it, mountain? Mm-hmm. Where did it go? I just had it right here. You play with two circular tablets. Where did the rest of the rules for Blizzard go? Uh, so it's mountain and saturation and difficult terrain, right? Yep. See if I can find yep. one. That, there it goes. There's one that I can show in the entirety of the thing. Oh, there it is. I was like, yeah. I was like, the screenshot we have cut off the last sentence. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you're yeah. basically just changing that mountain from... Uh, to, to mount it uh, from zero G. Yeah. And that's cool because now there are things that can use their mountain train rule. <laughs> cough, Merovingia, cough. Um, <laughs> what is that? Like metros and briskards? Uh, it's metros. Uh, I think metros have mountain. Bris- briskards definitely have it. I'm not sure about metros. I'll check really quickly. I think um, metros do because. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Joe I was talking about how, it's a uh, awesome. terrain total for metros. Okay, those jerks. But believe me, I would have been been climbing plus them, uh, climbing plus uh, my camo tokens all day if uh, that was the case. But yeah, oh, vol- right. yeah, volunteers are probably what you're thinking about as. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, as, yeah. Uh, uh, Jordan yeah, points out. Um, yeah. So honestly, like I, I approve. I applaud uh, that CV is trying to encourage more terrain interactions but it really isn't going to do a huge amount and really what it like i'm I'm, i wasn't a fan of the localized decompression a because it's a rule that people always forget even at tournaments they just like forget to get the 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 circle thing out and then they remember like halfway through turn two and they're like ah forget it right so like what effect did it actually have on the game it also tends to disrupt the narrative a lot because if you're playing on like a jungle table unless you like want to head cannon in some kind of like weird alien artifact creating like a zero G zone, or in this case, like random mountain thing in the middle of your, your desert table or like aquatic table um, or like a city table, right? Like you can have all those, all those zones in those various types of um, tables, but like, it's weird to just randomly be forced to include it. 
So I mean, I, like at least the blizzard to me is a little bit of like a there's it's snowing in in this particular place. There's a little bit of a, a snow swell or more snow is falling here. Like I can I can imagine it is snowing everywhere and those spots are just the more relevant places. Yeah, of it. yeah. I mean, I you know not to toot our own horn or anything, but I'm really pleased with what we did for Rose City Raid. Right where we gave yeah. each of the each of the terrain types like a thing to do. So mountain terrain, if you had it, and you were in a mountain terrain, you got climbing plus. If you were in desert terrain, you got six sense. If you were aquatic terrain, you got stealth. Um, jungle terrain, you got plus three fizz for dodge. Uh, zero G, yeah. you got super jump. Um, am I missing anything? That sounds like everything, right? That sounds uh, close. Yeah. So, but like that gives not only incentive for you to take those skills and remember that you have them. Um, it also encourages people to make tables that make sense, right? Like if you have a big mountain on your table, the mountain troops with all their training and special gear, like briskards actually have like ropes sculpted on them, right? Like that is for climbing. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can use it. Right. So like even, even like, uh, uh, like very urban tables can do it, right? Like you can have like rock formations in the city parks and stuff like that. Right. Uh, so those are things you can you can do, or like observation platforms on like a big plinth or something, right? So all kinds like of a, reasons, yeah. You could also do like a, a little playground with a sand pit for everybody that has uh, desert terrain. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I know <laughs> everything that's going around here. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. Why didn't I make like a playground sandbox right for my city table for desert terrain? There you go. That's that's the ticket. <laughs> yeah. So that's I mean, awesome. it's. It's definitely helpful to have it. Uh, as a TO, I would not be worried if you forgot about Blizzard circles on your table and came up to me afterwards. Like, it's not going to disqualify you. Um, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, that's fine, too. I would also not be offended if, like, you decided to change the terrain type to match your table. Uh, that would be fine. Yeah. I don't think this is a balance issue. I think this is purely them trying to shoehorn in more terrain rules. Uh, or so rather more more instances where you can use and apply terrain rules to get people used to them. Right. Because um, a lot of people don't play with it. Like we play with them all the time. We often forget uh, between games, right? Like how, or like as we as we iterate through the tables we have, some don't have a lot of terrain zones and they have terrain types instead, right? Like you're not going to move through this patch of trees because it's like a little tree on a 40 mil, mil base, but that generates low vis and saturation. It's not like a whole zone that you can physically move through and you have to pay attention to difficult terrain rules then. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, it's it's fine. There's definitely more ways they can make us engage with it. And it, just the movement bonuses and stuff are, are generally small enough not to really make a difference. I mean, like, obviously an inch will matter in some games. You know, you'll, you'll make it to the objective or you won't. Um, but I, I feel like there's definitely stuff you could do. And, and the list that we gave for the various upgrades to the different terrain types... Um, you know, they, they, there's absolutely a uh, room to, for debate as to whether or not they're balanced, uh, but at least they're interesting. Um, yeah, the, yeah. to answer the question, uh, the blizzards don't move. That would be neat to do, right? Have like mobile blizzards and stuff. That would be cool, right? Like if you had a moving zone of extreme cold or something, right? That you had to avoid things like that would be neat. Um, but yeah, it just a. Slow. Got just a little bit of soapbox situation talking about terrain and how they could do better, but uh, it's it's uh, a a reasonable well, thing. I guess the other thing is that does this make it better or worse than like when they had those missions where a, a the exclusion zone was a saturation and difficult terrain or things like that? Right. Oh, right. Like the old rescue where you're just like, why? Yeah. You're like, oh, I hit a wall when I was trying to get these guys. No, this is way better because those were so hard to visualize on the table. Yeah. But I feel like they got used even less. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good, good rescue, says Puma Drift Cat. <laughs> it was it was punishing, that's for sure. And in this crowd, punishing means good. So I agree. Uh, but yeah, definitely hard to like that would that would be a tough like trying to teach rescue to a new player is difficult. This is a much easier uh, thing to explain to a new player like this is a zone it does stuff um i i do right. like that it's saturation i think that's really good because it does teach you to leverage saturation in certain ways right like that can let you do crazy things like split burst against a link team in aro which you would never really want to do right so you shoot at two members of the link on one die each everybody's on a die um 
that's worthwhile, right? In some in some scenarios where you find that would be good. Now you never want to do that in like a non-saturation case, right? Because then it's their two dice versus your one. That's bad. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I I think it's a good teaching tool. It's a good way to sort of like encourage people to add terrain to their their board. Uh, I think I think we all agree, at least you know in this group uh, that's on the show tonight that it's the, the <laughs> goal of it is good, right? We all want more terrain and more terrain rules and ways to interact with cool terrain pieces. Uh, I just, I think we would have executed it differently. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's that for that. Um, they have added uh, an actual bit of interactive terrain though, in the form of a turret. That's right. Which this is, is, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to find the thing that will fit on one page. Yeah, oh, so sure, sure. they basically added a. Uh, here we go. That'll that'll do. Yeah, perfect. So there you go. There's the there's the turret and its stats. So effectively, you each get a, a turret, which is uh, silhouette one, one structure, arm two, BTS three, close combat five, BS ten. It's got a combi rifle, um, pair of CCW at minus three, three sixty visor, and it has a total reaction combi rifle attached to it. So it's a little, it's literally what it says on the box. It's a defensive turret classification, Foxtrot thirteen. Um, yep, they just, they just, it's, you know, get deployed in your deployment zone wherever you want them. Uh, and they, it's an interesting little touch. Yeah. Right, because it's used in, in some of the missions. It's used like it's used in. I think it's using looting and sabotaging, right? So it's one more thing that the opponent has to go through to deal with, or to deal with before they get to the uh, to the objective. It's not a terribly powerful attack piece. I mean, you can't really but, attack anything unless you're like leaving yeah. it out in the open, specifically to cover a fire lane, which is a is a dangerous proposition. You'll drain an order, but it's not going to die immediately. Um, I I see this as their. Um, attempt at mitigating the bikes because now bikes are not hampered by terrain. Uh, they are easier to move. They gain cover from things or easier to move because of the, the terrain skills, right? Not having to slow down. So it's harder to speed bump bikes by, by including like area terrain on your table. Um, they are more killy because they are more survivable. Um, and so it's more likely with their speed that they'll be in your deployment zone on turn one. If somebody wants to execute an alpha strike, um, so, this yeah, is just I mean, a way they're, of not, helping they're not great, great shooters, but it's definitely not something that you want to just have shooting at you. Yeah. Uh, like, mm-hmm. I've one of my most deadly uh, games was when I had a Kesotsu out just out in the open, basically behind cover at, that my opponent did not want to have to deal with to get to my other stuff. And it was just everything that he moved up to try and shoot something else, the Kesotsu was taking them out. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's like here's here's a here's a shot on seven, because you are outside of sixteen, yeah. sir. And he's like, yeah, you'll miss. Yeah, More crit. and then it just hits. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you know, bikes don't really have the generally have the armor to uh, to take a hit. Yeah, yeah, it's a it, it's a fine little addition, I think. I'm sure someone will complain about it, but it's. I like that it's it, it's a little bit of a speed bump in a season where speed is greatly uh, encouraged. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jordan points out that there's this little clause here, um, which specifically says, "Oops," specifically says that uh, you must place it before the deployment phase. Right, 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 right. That's important. So there's that. So which is pretty pretty relevant. Um, and also, uh, I be- I would imagine you can place this in cover, right? It has nothing to say that you can't do yeah. that. I don't see why not. Yeah, seems fine. We'll um, one thing that they have done throughout this document is any kind of thing that you add as the result of a um, of a scenario like the AC two, this turret thing, the heaters. If you reduce it to structure zero, it gets removed from the table. That's you're done. Right, you don't have to take it down to negative one like you did in previous seasons. So they finally clarified that and made it very explicit. Uh, they also clarified a bunch of like token sizes, right? So if you are worried about like how big a supply token is, it's the size of an S one base or S two base. So. Yeah, they they put the millimeter diameters of all the tokens yeah. on there. 
that's convenient. They also like tell you how big like the various uh, elements, like heaters are S3, um, the AC2 is uh, S5, that kind of thing. So they they're, they've become a lot more uh, explicit, just sort of standardized play across all the metas. Like Zerbi has slightly different interpretations of the meta now. It's it's codified in the document, which is I mean everybody is probably playing pretty close to the same thing anyway. Uh, but uh, now it's nice to just like explicitly say this is what it is, and now there's no argument and no interpretation. It's just this is you're done, which is which is great for competitive play. They also give you the uh, the tokens in the new ITS pack, which is great. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that's also probably why they why they did it as well. Neat. So, with the uh, let's see here after the automated defense system, or what is it the uh, the defensive turret, um, Antarctic territory. This is something that Carlos maybe slightly overstated in the video. Not every single table. Uh, has the rule that they count as uh, the, the Arctic terrain, but some of the missions do. Basically, it has no negative effect to anything. It is just that if you have terrain total, terrain mountain, climbing or climbing plus, you get plus one to your first movement skill. Like, that's that's all. Yeah. Um, it's not huge, but what it does mean is like movement seven, four bear pods. <laughs> yeah, I mean everything's just going to get faster, right? Again, another reason why the turrets are here. Yeah. What's the um? Is, yeah, the turret possible. can shoot just as well as a bear pod. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, you know it's like was it the car who? Yeah. There's been a lot of uh, climbing plus. Yeah, movement nine four Sujan. Uh. Do not want. Yeah, fast bear week. <laughs> so. And then the last one is the the automated uh, defense system, which I think is only the AC2. And the heater. And the heater. So AC2s and the heaters uh, can punch you back. So basically, it's a face-to-face -face roll, um, even if Berserk is used. Yep. So it cancels, no it cancels Berserk, which is, which is fun. Also, uh, you don't get any um, you don't get any martial arts. You has... also don't get immunity total when it hits you. Yeah. So that's that's like. fun too. Uh, so you can actually you actually do get stunned. Uh, I mean, it's only CC eight, so you're probably okay. Probably. Right. Uh, but you know you do have to you have to do worry about it. Um, I I <laughs> guess if you're not rolling a CC attack and you just plant D charges, you're safe. Would be my interpretation. From the way it's written, yes. Um, which is kind oh, of silly. Wait. Okay, I was a little bit worried about that. I was like, wait a minute. So now your D charge units. So really what it does is it, it doesn't affect D charge units, which are were, uh, by and large fine, but it just prevents things like McMurro or it yeah. slows down McMurro a little bit. Yeah, they just have poor wiring. You you chop into it and you get a, you get a nice little shock. And even McMurro is not, not immune to like the T-Rex fence in Jurassic Park. Yeah, there you go. Um, so but that's that's fine. At first, I was a little bit worried that it would affect planting decharges, but I don't see why it would. Um, it does say it's when, you know when it's attacked, and that's not an attack yeah. label, so I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, and like a lot of things, really, a lot of armies relied on bad CC units with decharges to get the job done, anyways. Mm -hmm. So this just kind of, I feel like this evens the uh, the playing field a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um... One last thing is there's of course the bike recon rule where some some missions just give you a free bike. Doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, right. No points, no swick. It doesn't count towards you can have an 11, 11 model combat group as a result. Uh, and you can have a 16 model list if you want. Um, and it gets specialist operative basically. Is what it boils Right, so go get that bounty hunter because you're going to need it in some of the missions. Uh, Aaron says that you know, I feel like the turret is more to disrupt impersonators, which is a key trait of a lot of the better performing armies. So maybe HBC and Toa will get brought down a little. I mean, sure, that's definitely something. Um, I don't think it's any more disruptive to an impersonator than somebody with a chain rifle, right? I mean, it's like you're going to get shot either way. Uh, it's just it's just an extra dude with a chain rifle, if you think about it that way. Um, it's I guess it can discover stuff, maybe? Not, Defensive turrets sure. are deployable weapons reacting with BS attack or CC attack to any order declared by an active enemy model, but not markers in LF or silo content. So they can't discover. 
Correct. That's be my interpretation. So I guess, yeah, it doesn't really help you, right? Because if they, if they could discover, that's pretty great, right? Like a free discover wandering around. Um, so, but like a fide mm -hmm. will walk right by this and be like, good robot, like pat it on the head and keep going. So, um, yeah, I mean, like it's, it's a, if you have nothing better to do with it than like cover your lieutenant in decap or something. Well, sure. the other thing is you're also deploying them before uh, you deploy the rest of your army. Yeah. So you're not really able to counter like it's it's something that you would have to put up with the idea that you're going to put their your lieutenant there because you expect that they have a impersonator. Yeah. So I mean it it, it can. I mean it's one of those things that it can force them to have to trade a little bit more, but um I don't know. I think it's it's more difficult to set up than than just putting down somebody with the chain rifle as as your reserve drop. Yeah, I mean, I think I think really, if you're if you're looking for a, a a direct mappable like this is the threat, this is the answer. I think it's great for AD troops, right? Yeah. So like you just you're just like you can't be here. Like even McMurrow, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean not McMurrow. Uh, Duroc has to respect this, right? Yeah. Like, you're just gonna get shot on thirteens. You might fail two saves if you get shot three times. Even shot on sevens is not something you know. Yeah. He's only got two wounds. Um, and you know, taking one of those wounds, suddenly you're you're not as confident running through that area where somebody's got a chain rifle. Yeah, jeez. I yeah, mean, if you're playing against Ariadna com uh, combined or nomads, just deploy this on your back table and just yeah, be fine. Uh, so so Aaron continues to say that uh, somebody who plays a lot of bikes, you know, she doesn't think that the turret is going to disrupt bikes a lot. I agree. Like it's not going to stop a bike. It's going to cost the bike orders. Like you can't just you can't just roll yeah. a bike through there unless it's an Aragato killer hacker in cyber mask mode, right? But like, if you roll a spit Aragato Spitfire or Kuroshi Rider through there, let's say, like, you're going to get shot. You will probably kill the turret in one order, but that's one order you spent, like, not maybe not using all of the bike's movement because you want to retain that cover bonus to shoot at this thing. And you may, like, have a, have a situation where, like, the dice don't go in your favor. You pass the arm save, now I have to shoot again. Like, that's what it's point is it's not it's not to disrupt or completely stop something right just like a tr bot is not supposed to completely stop something it often happens that a tr bot like will stop an attack uh but that's not its purpose its purpose is to drain like one to two orders maybe and having a free like literally zero cost option that you can just place in a place that you know a bike is going to come down is a place you don't have to place a chain rifle so you can like so you can uh put it that chain rifle that you would use to respond to say if a day Right. So you can think of it as like a second order effect. Like uh, I, I'm facing Hog Islam, right? And I expect for days I'm going to, but I also expect Coom Bikers. So I'm going to put this turret somewhere where I know Coom Biker might zoom down from the other side of the table to defend this like approach lane um, against a bike. And then I can take my chain rifle that I was going to have to ask to do double duty, defend against the Coom Biker and a Fide. Now I can say like, your only job is to respond at the Fide. And I can like set up my deployment that way. So it's it's not like none of these things are hard stops. It's more of a an extra tool to help you shape your deployment zone in an advantageous way for you that's free. And I think that's that's great. It's also to encourage you to take those uh, total reaction baggage bots. So yeah. you can have all of the uh, the automated turrets in your right. deployment zone. I mean, maybe maybe this is their cheeky way. Like we're gonna straight up upgrade bikes, guys. Bikes are really good now. Uh, you know, here's a little tool to help you deal with that and nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You also have that tool available to you all the time. Once the season is over, it's just on a much larger base and it costs points. Right. Maybe. And the thing, like they did that with, um, well, I never already has the, the, the TR bot comedy that nobody takes. Um, I, I take it, but I'm weird. Yes. Do you? I've never, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen the we, comedy we, bot. I, I, I can absolutely point to battle reports where I've taken it. it. I take it primarily in area control missions where the baggage is relevant um okay and okay. uh and its range bands are relevant because if it's pushing into the midfield then the combi range band is quite good and then of course you have um uh the uh what should we call it um well i mean the yeah. other thing too is like if it uh you know if bikes get too disruptive maybe they'll uh they'll do a season where you they upgrade remotes so, yeah you know. i actually found a pretty cool model for mine online and it's kind of hard to see in this picture but it's just a neat little like four wheeler thing with a big, like a big yeah, machine. I'm holding it. I'll make you really big. One second. Gotta find. There we go. Boom. There we go. Uh... Yeah. 
Totally out of focus. Wonderful. Yep. We're doing it. High quality content. <laughs> doing it live. It's the best we can do. But, it's also good for the podcast. Yes. Yeah, also right, great for yeah, the yeah, podcast. The so podcast. Just, just long <laughs> silence as we rotate this out of focus model in front of the camera. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> oh, I hope your sorry. drive to work has been pleasant. <laughs> okay. So let's let's maybe uh, talk a little bit about um, where some of these missions are used. Or where some of these rules are used in the missions. <laughs> How's the Heineken treating you? Do we want to just one? I don't know. It's because I didn't have a beer for lunch. I didn't. I didn't warm uh, up. Just, I'm coming in dry. Um, uh, do we want to mention before that that uh, we we lost safe area? You know, RIP. But we did gain frostbite. We did gain frostbite. Worth it. Yeah. It's back and better than ever. Definitely worth, worth it. Worth it. Okay, so let's actually really quick, let's just talk about like which missions do we get those free bikes in, right? I think that's a fun way to to approach this because bikes are cool now and free bikes are even cooler. So John did a little bit of homework and broke all this down. But basically, if you are playing Acquisition, Annihilation, Capture and Protect, Frostbite or Power Pack, uh, bust out your motorcycle. Yep. So there's John's cool spreadsheet that I then color color coded so I can read it easier. Wait, you um, don't like looking at terminals? I see. All right. I don't. Elitist GUI person. Right. So yeah, so those one, two, three, four, five missions out of twenty. So a quarter of the missions have that. Um the defensive turret shows up in five missions as well. So was that countermeasures, decap, highly classified, quadrant control and supremacy that unfortunately yep. means that you never receive both a free turret and a free motorcycle you got to limit the free things you know otherwise people start expecting them right now, um, the, uh, the really interesting thing is to me is that um in some ways it makes like the the highly classified and countermeasures uh i'm wondering if more is just to slow down the the racking up of <laughs> uh, you know those classifieds. Oh, uh huh. Visions. I mean, I I sort of see it as two things. One, you can certainly use it as a as a expendable guard for your HVT, especially for something like countermeasures. So, like one strategy I've seen people do in countermeasures is line all your HVTs up right next to one another, and then really like double down or triple down on defending them. Um, that can go very south if your opponent has a, a thing that can do multiple HVT objectives and they have a smoke source or an eclipse smoke source. Um, which I have done to people. Uh, so that's the thing you need to worry about. Uh, but having a turret covering them is great. Uh, also, I think I, I personally, I would approach that as more of a, um, some people will take the strategy in countermeasures or, or highly classified. Uh, they are, they are resource intensive missions in terms of like getting stuff to places and like spending orders, trying things. So, uh, having a way to, um, make it harder to put you in loss of lieutenant is mm -hmm. is good right like to dissuade somebody from doing it's like oh i have to get through like two chain rifles and a turret eh, um, maybe i won't try it maybe i'll focus on something else like doing the mission so um, never mind yeah like you know there's there's a little bit of that i, I expect people will see we'll see some interesting uses out of the um out of the uh the uh turret other things you can do are like mark out quadrants right so like in quadrant control, you can mark the center line of the table, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is helpful too. So you can know whether you're in the left or right quadrant. Yeah, I guess I'll do the mission instead. Uh, so those those are all things you can you can do with it, right? You, you know, everybody knows they use the HVT as the measuring stick tool. Um, so you can do that. Uh, but there's another, basically another HVT uses a measuring reference point. Uh, if, you, if you have trouble estimating that, I know I do sometimes. Uh, but also just like defending key parts or, you know, uh, another thing is like, some some uh, some some units like uh, antipode controller or the the puppet master right could use a little bit of extra backup um, to prevent the, those things from going offline. Um, so yeah, just like, just like little things like that seem seem helpful. Yeah, and then the uh, the terrain rules right. So we never have both blizzards and the Antarctic Antarctic territory on the same mission. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna drop those blizzard zones in annihilation countermeasures decap. Firefight and Frostbite. Yay, Frostbite. Just every time I see that, I just want to say yay, Frostbite. 
Um, and then the full table effects are going to be in frontline, highly classified looting and sabotaging, quadrant control, and the armory. So some interesting things here is that frontline looting and sabotaging, quadrant control, and the armory, so everything but highly classified on there, is a, uh, a zone control mission. So this is going to speed up units yeah. in the missions where getting to places is important. I mean, looting and sabotage isn't much of an area control. I mean, sure, but it is very much a mobility mission. You need to get there, so that, yeah. that helps. For I sure. mean, being fast. Yeah. 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 Um, so being able to d deliver your decharge potentially a little bit quicker is cool. But that, I mean, it could even be a half an order quicker, which is a big deal, right? Because if it, it, it could be the difference between having to um, spend another order or being able to move and decharge. Yeah, I mean, also, how many times have you had, like, one swing on something, right? And you, like, yeah. if you had had another half order, you could have you could have swung twice. So, yeah, that could be the difference between victory and defeat, right? Those are those are very real things. But, yeah, I mean, I, again, not a huge fan of the, the terrain options here. Uh, but, I mean, it's fine. It's not, it's not, it's not game breaking. It's not, uh, not a big deal either way. Uh, they're trying stuff out, so uh, let them collect their data. Uh, I think I think the best thing we can do as a community about it is if you love it, let them know. If you hate it, let them know. Um, if you are ambivalent, let them know that too. Like a lot of times, the the, the silent majority is like it's fine, and they, they should know that. So like one of the things that um, we've sort of talked with Coney about um, is like in in the current era where there aren't very many in person ITS tournaments, which is a lot of the way they get data back from the community, mm -hmm. they they don't have that now. So it'd be good to let yeah. them know and be more vocal and and uh, in a, in a polite way, of course, but uh, you know just give them some feedback on what you what you think. I mean, if I can't shout at them on the forums, I just don't know what life is all about. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's a hard time. <laughs> I mean, that's how we got crits changed. Okay, so I think if I yell loud enough, I can get whatever I want. It would have been really cool if he... I mean, it worked for the other Ranger, really... so... I mean... Right, exactly. <laughs> Yell more. Yep. Um, no, it would have been really cool if... I remember a couple of seasons ago, they had blast templates, neoprene blast templates in the swag bags. And it would have been really cool if they made neoprene blizzard templates. Right. To, to use. All right, so now let's talk about maybe some of the more uh, specific mission changes. Right, some mission. Oh, some missions have a rule called snow ops, which is just a a silly new way of saying uh, data tracker. Yeah, it's specifically for frostbite. We can get into that in a moment. Yeah. So I guess I mean yeah. we've already talked about all the stuff that is is has changed mission to mission. Uh, I mean we can we can probably you guys can read right like uh, yeah we we don't need to go through like hey acquisition and annihilation have the same scoring like they're the same mission you just now have to deal with some. So either bikes or terrain zones. So let's 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 spend a little more extra time maybe talking about things like um like frostbite, which has changed a lot, actually. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, talking like about to... the changes I think is very good. Yeah. So frostbite is 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 a pretty pretty big set of delta. So let's go take a look at frostbite really quick. Uh let's pull up my there we go. All right. So um it looks the same ish right so so uh, murdering more army points is still three points dominating the yep. exclusion zone is still is a bunch of points three points right having at least one heating unit is a point and now you have three classified objectives right? that's nuts so it used to be it used to be kill the data tracker for data tracker data tracker for two points and have yep. and then one classified so they've gotten rid of kill the data tracker which is now called the the snow ops um and and now they've changed it to just straight up three classifieds, which which turns it more from uh, a straight up killing mission, uh, right? Because you can you can just secure the HVT there and and just you know run around with your data tracker and do stuff, uh, kill things with it maybe. Um, and now it's turned it into sort of like killy plus a bunch of potential uh, specialist play. So the other huge thing that's changed is that in the uh, when you dominate the the zone of control, uh, it's no longer the um, uh, the uh, having a data tracker in the zone. It's having more points in the zone. Right. Which is not what it used to be. It used to be like if you you were the only data tracker in the exclusion zone, you dominated. You got all those points. Now it's you have to have actually more army points in there. Um, so that's that's a huge change. 
Uh, and so part of the problem with that is like, say I, I recently played um, Frostbite with Merovingia and uh, Merovingia has a hard time because a lot of their stuff just straight up dies in Killer Cold. So, you know, yep. what are you going to do? I, I, I don't want to field a million Moblos. I mean, like I like Moblos, but I don't like them that much. So uh, like, what do I do with that? I guess I could take an Anaconda, but that's kind of skewing my list one way or the other. So what they've actually done to help um, to help out with that is Killer Cold now only uh, not uh, applies to heavy infantry, remote, and tag. So the remotes are now immune to the cold, which is a, which is a big change. Um, so you know that that definitely helps out folks with tractor mules like Ariadna, right? So uh, now you don't Ariadna. necessarily have to have a tag because a lot of Arian, Ariadna and factions don't have tags. Um, so you can have your heavy infantry in there and your tractor mules, and uh, if you bring a tag, you can do that too. Of course, the snow ops uh, trooper. Uh, gets to be immune to the cold as well. Um, they also get their irregular special order. It's called the Snow Ops Special Order or whatever now. It's it's the data tracker order we're all used to. Uh, the key difference now is I believe the Snow Ops guy can't push the button anymore. So it used to be that yeah, the data tracker... No longer specialists. Yeah, so the data tracker used to be able to push the button, turn on the heater. Uh, the Snow Ops guy is too busy buttoning up their parka to to do that. So um, you, you cannot push the button anymore, which is a big deal. Yeah. I was going to say, too, I mean, with something like Merovinci, you could bring Anaconda and make a Wolfgang duo with it and sure. uh, be your snow. Ops. And then so I think that that is kind of fun because it allows you to take maybe one or two of those units that are part of a link or, uh, you know, that you would want to advance further up the table and uh, make them snow up so that they're not, you know, just dying from. Being, yeah, uh, from exposure. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Those are things you can do for sure. Um, and Merovingi has access to Moblos and stuff, so they're they're fine. It's just you you end up having to skew your list a little bit, especially now. Before I could like throw just one trooper in there, or like you know one one you know, one uh, tag or something. Now it's different. Uh, this opens up a lot of other play too, right? So. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the big things that uh, Pete loves to do is in uh, in ISIS take the Sujan and then climb it up the tallest thing in the center and just park it there as a data tracker. Good luck digging that thing out. And now you know nomads yeah. can do that too with the Vostok or any of their climbing plus remotes. Um, and then of course you have uh, the um, the Alef one. I'm blanking on the name right now, uh, but the the two wound yeah. one. Darn and it. yeah, I think most of their Aleph's remotes are climbing. Plus yeah, as yeah, well. yeah, yeah. A lot of Aleph's remotes, just like Nomads, are, Rudra, are climbing. Rudra. Yeah, thank you. The Rudra, yeah. right? So, uh, also remotes like uh, all the Dakini are remotes. Unidrons are remotes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that Plasma Q drone is now a royal pain in the butt because it also has an extra order and it's going to be in the midfield, plasmaing all the things with its plasma mimetism gun, right? So, uh, it'd be funny if you shot things and it got mimetism, but anyway. Um, yeah. So it also so the, means that the that uh you know hitting a heater is less important for some armies now too. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. Like I'm losing chafe, you know, at this point. Right. Uh, also, also the heating unit uh, is um, going to punch back, just like in looting and sabotaging. Um, it has the same stats in terms of punching back, but it is significantly less uh, less beefy with only arm two BTS zero structure three, and it's a little shorter. So. So the real funny thing is that uh, that text is exactly copied over. So in looting and sabotage, it's also a heating unit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Whoops. Good work. Um, but yeah, so I, I think this is this is a pretty significant change. Uh, it will like, most of these changes so far uh, would not have like in, in all the other lists, right? Like you know, you got a turret, you got blizzard, you got the uh, Antarctic terrain. Uh, or even a free bike, I wouldn't have changed my list at all from ICS 12 to 13. Uh, I will have to change it for Frostbite, right? Just because yeah. I, I now need things that survive in the color cold because I need to cram a bunch of them into that exclusion zone. Um, so that's that's a pretty big deal. Which is, which is yeah, cool. this is a mission. Uh, I was just going to say, sorry, with this mission, that I was, uh, it was pretty funny. I was really wondering why they didn't bring this one back last season because mm -hmm. they made all those changes to heavy infantry to sure uh, right. for this one i feel like was when it first came out was kind of one where it felt like they were trying to push people to bring more heavy infantry um but you know people would bring like one or two and still not really commit to it but 
Yeah. You know, when they made those changes, it seemed like that was like the perfect time to bring it back. I mean, now now they're definitely encouraging heavy imagery, right? Like I want to bring my my uh, IA pain train and just like jam it in the middle and be like, all right, dig this out. Good luck. Guys, why why decide at all? Just take the Knight of Montessa. <laughs> sure. There you go. <laughs> now you have all the things. I mean, I, get, I still get a little sad thinking about bringing Toha because uh, as soon as they lose a couple wounds, then they're no longer heavy infantry and they just die in the cold. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> It's so cold without my meat suit. Yeah. yeah. You gotta wear yeah, your meat right? dress. Uh, ISS is happy. Wu Ming with the Zanyang. Take the Zanyang as a snow op so it can survive. That's pretty good. Yeah, all kinds of all <laughs> kinds of fun stuff. But yeah, Frostbite has changed in a in a big way. Uh you know, I, I we've obviously been thinking a lot about Frostbite because we included it in Red uh Rosity Raid. Um, I'm glad to see it come back with a pretty significant change. Because now now it's more of um it's more of a like a nuanced positional thing and you have to like also pay attention to your classifieds there's a lot going on before in the original frostbite uh it was sort of like all right go murder their data tracker and then just like sort of play a very cagey game where you don't expose any points for them to kill on your on their turn and then you know chip away what they leave exposed on their turn and the end of the game you just like advance your data tracker into the middle in some sort of safe fashion or leave it there on a building if it's got climbing plus then you're done right so it can be kind of non-interactive um but this is this forces like engagement in the center, which is a which is a big deal. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like this this will definitely show up in next year's RCR, right? Because it's it's gonna really affect the list. So I'll just say that right now. Uh, you you have a whole year to convince us otherwise. How's that? The thing that I like about it is it's like a reverse panic room. Right. You're like go into the the death area. Just everybody go in there. You need points. <laughs> Take the zone. Awesome. Yeah. And there are now three missions that kill you, so that's also fun. Yeah, also true. That would be that would be fun. You can you can play a, a tournament of the table is against you. Yep. Yeah, table hates you. Um, let's see what else. Oh, another big change uh, is frontline, right? So frontline yeah. has changed. It so, looks it looks pretty innocuous. You look at it and you're like, oh, the main objectives are the same: dominate near, center, and far, right? So near, mid, far, and then you're like, oh, great, and you keep reading. You're like, wait, four classifieds. And so what they've done is it used to be um, two points for the near, three for mid, four for far zone, right? So just for those of you who yeah. have never seen Frontline before, uh, you divide the, the middle of the table up into three zones. You are near, you are middle, you are far. Your opponent has the opposite. Uh, and then you want to control the far one and the near one. Basically, generally, that's how it works. Uh, and you can fight over the middle if you need to. Uh, but basically, they changed it so that uh, the, the zones are worth less points and now you have classifieds to deal with. And so, four classifieds. yeah, four classifieds is a is a is a big deal. Yeah. So if you if you want to hear uh, Clint's rendition of it, uh, you can definitely uh, ping him on Discord, and I'm sure he'll record some some recorded audio for you there, uh, wherever you are. Um, yeah. So I think this is awesome, partially because it it discourages or at least tries to mitigate some of the more degenerate play styles for frontline. Uh, yeah. JSA loves frontline. You just spam a bunch of Odin Waban and ninjas and Kitsune and then put a bunch of very expensive things that people generally can't touch if they don't have sensor and they just like appear at the end of the game and move into the zones and dominate them and they just win, right? Um, so that's cool that they encourage you to have need to have the orders to get classifieds because that's actually a pretty big uh, chunk of the game, right? So in, in, in fact, you know, we haven't, we haven't gone through and done all of the math, but uh you probably will have at least one zone uh so if you if you spend your whole time like collecting zones and then not not uh, worrying about your classifieds it's possible you'll lose right mm -hmm. so um those are things that you need to you need to pay attention to um it's it not, well not just not just you you can lose like four points is a huge amount of points in this right yeah. like if you have you know four points and your closest sector you've scored already half the you know, half the points that you can. Mm -hmm. um, and it also means that Secure the HVT is only going to cover one of the classifieds instead of covering 100% of the classifieds. Yeah, right. Exactly. So I think I think this is a this is good for the health of the game. I think this is good for uh, for Frontline as a mission. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it still works fine as a teaching mission, right? So if you're a new player, you can be like, we're not going to play the classifieds. 
the game still functions with one, two, three point scoring, right? Totally fine. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, yeah. So to to sort of touch on the, the 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 conversation that's happening in chat right now for those of you listening on the podcast, um, uh, Frostbite going back one mission is a mission that sort of requires or heavily encourages having uh, heavy infantry. Uh, so, you know, Chad is noticing that Druze does not have any heavy, have any heavy imagery. They, of course, do have some excellent remote options. So that sort of is a way to, uh, to mitigate that. Um, so, of course, they have tags as well. So something to just remember if you're thinking about that uh, when you're planning out your tournament list, uh, which I like, right? So adding, adding remotes um, sort of solves the problem of like, well, I can't play yeah. my faction for this. Like, I cannot play this faction for, for the tournament because they don't do X mission well, right? So that's a statement that I think we've all made at some point. Those are with multiple armies. Um, and you're like, man, I really wish I could play, I don't know, US Ariadna, but they like suck at this mission. So I guess I can't. Um, Minutemen, finally a reason to take Minutemen. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Right. Yeah. They're good. And they're good in Frostbite. So we're just playing Frostbite forever now. Right, Adam? So you can play your Minutemen. There you go. It's the only one. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so, so it's nice that they're sort of encouraging a little bit of um, uh, the ability to take what, what you want to play, which is, which is also great. Let's see. Uh, most of the other missions are are the same, right? So looting and sabotaging. Of course, you get the uh, the AC two fights back. That's really just um, sort of put a cap on on blowouts, like, right? So one of the things that can happen in looting and sabotaging, you jet McMurrow across the table, obliterate the AC two, maybe kill something with a chain rifle. McMurrow dies, but it takes like a significant part of their first turn to like unpick the McMurrow problem, and mm -hmm. then <laughs> the rest of your game can be spent just like defending your AC two and murdering their stuff. Uh, and that can result in a big blowout game that feels bad for both players. And now there's more of a, like, well, it's a, it's a, always a risk. Gives you a little bit of pucker factor, factor when you get McMur even McMurrow across the table because he's not immune to all yeah. the toys. Um, so I think that's that's good as well. Uh, try to... I mean, he's, he's nearly. <laughs> yeah. Somebody definitely needs to make a console with, like, the, the like a boxing glove on the, the like, extendo arm. Oh sure, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. The scissor, the scissor arm. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Get um, back. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I want to have of... make one with like a little like pan alarm that comes out and it's got a little shock taser. You know. Right. There you go. <laughs> That's a good time. Uh, so what other what other big changes? Uh, power pack has changed, uh, pretty pretty significantly. Um, so here's here's bike. basically. So do you get a bonus bike? Yep. Uh, so you lost localized decompression, you get a bike, which is nice. Uh, they've changed the, the same general objectives are there, right? So same number of antennas, you get uh, one point. Uh, it used to be two. Uh, you get uh, points for having more antennas. It used to be three, now it's two, right? So those both got downgraded by one. Uh, not having your console be controlled goes up by one to three. That's right? huge. Uh, and then, of course, there's the control of the enemy console, same as last season. You get a point for each round you do it, uh, and uh, same two classifieds. Um, it kind of addresses the power pack problem, which we've discussed before. Uh, just to remind everybody of what that is, if you need to get more antennas, and that actually is the is the lion share of the points from last time, because I think yeah. that gets you to six, right? Uh, sorry, it gets you to five because you you have more antennas and presumably you murdered anything that was on your console, so that's five points. And there's very few ways for your opponent to outpoint that. So you can play very you know non-interactively and just infiltrate like your favorite two TO specialists from your faction, right? Drop them down near the antenna, hope your opponent doesn't have sensor, and on the last turn of the game, pop them out, push both buttons on the most convenient uh, antennas, and then you've won the game, right? And that's like that feels yeah. bad. You can do it with camo token spam and Ariadna. I've done it to Adam. Um, and it's just like, yep. well, this is, this feels bad. Like I didn't bring sensor, right? So we've talked a lot about how sensor is relevant. You should still bring it, right? It makes you, it makes you, uh, have more options on the table. So it's, that's good. Um, but this kind of addresses it. I don't think it's still, uh, it's not, it's not a perfect fix, but it's definitely helpful. Really what it translates to is you need to pay attention to the objectives now. So, uh, sorry, the classified objectives now, which you didn't really have to before. So, um, let's say you do the thing where you do the TO trick, right? Where you're like, all right, I have two TO guys. They push the buttons in the last turn. 
Uh, and presumably you spent the previous, you know, couple of turns just murdering anything on your console. Um, that probably means you aren't going after their console either. So you get your your two points for having more antennas. You have three points for having your console not be controlled. So that's five points. They also have presumably kept you off their console all game. And at the end of the game, they get three points for that as well. And if they like bother to get classified, they're at five. Now it's a tie. Right. So yeah. if if yeah. if you if you manage to sort of like keep everybody boxed into their half of the table and then at the end you control the antennas, right? The antennas are still important because they will swing the game one way or the other. Uh, but you can you can you know play the you can uh, also play the non-interactive thing and sort of say like, well, I'm just like not going to deal with you. You can have the buttons. I'll get my classifieds and make sure you're off of my console, right? So uh, I think really what this what this boils down to, if you want to get a very high objective point game, you have to engage with the consoles. Is basically what it boils yeah. down to. Um, so well, that's so that console cool. on turn three is a four point console. Four point swing, yeah. They lose three points, you gain one. So that that definitely will flip most well, games in your favor. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's a, a big deal. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? So so actually, let's let's do that, right? So if if they if they do the, the non interactive thing and they happen to be going first. Right, you can you can airdrop something in combat, jump it in on top of the console, hope it survives. Right, uh, maybe mm -hmm. there's a window where you can use the console as a shadow or something, uh, and then boom, you've got um, you've got you've got uh, a four point swing and you've won the game. So uh, definitely encourages people to be a little more aggressive in power pack. A power pack was also already very aggressive, but now it has like a, a purpose, and it's not just like I have a you know Toha loves power pack because you can just spam impersonators and like really attack the entire surface area <laughs> like the, the like the attack surface of of the deployment zones in power pack is very large and uh very few armies can can exploit it as well as toha can obviously like you know assassins can as well but assassins don't fides aren't two wounds so so that's a big deal um and then of course toha has excellent uh infiltrators as well right yeah, so does assassins but you, you get my point um but yeah, but now, but now it has purpose. There's something for that impersonator to do after it survives and kills a bunch of stuff and retreats to the midfield uh, and go after that console. So um, I think I think we probably won't see huge shifts in list building for Power Pack, but I think we'll see big shifts in the way people uh, deploy. Right? Like you'll probably see a little more concentration of of specialists. Uh, like some sorry, some of those midfield infiltrators near the console to protect it. That'll be more relevant, uh, and then you know maybe maybe people will try to uh, engage in a different line of play than just doing the to camo like impersonator pop out. Oh, sorry, to camo infiltrator pop out at the end. Yeah, yeah. It's again, it's it's nice how just them observing the points and then making small adjustments to the way things are scored um, ends up having kind of a, a really dramatically positive result in the what like what the outcomes are going to be in tournaments we're going to see a larger range of scores here and it's actually really similar uh, in a way to the changes they did in supplies yep right so supplies had a really big like the mission is you play the mission exactly the same you just score differently so right now it is uh two points per box you control one point if you control more and one point if your enemy doesn't control any and then the two classifieds, which I had before. So previously, it was one point per box you controlled, three points for controlling more, and then two points of the enemy not having any. And I felt like a lot of games that end with like two, somebody having two one or two zero. Yeah. Right. And it was just like a huge blowout in the score. So this actually keeps the points more centered and relevant around the boxes. So if you if you have yeah, so previously, if you had two to one, right, like your score would have been, or under these scores, your score is going to be four, um, five points, right? Where previously, I guess it still would have been, yeah, it still would have been five to three. What do you think here? Well, right. And so, that, like, here, here's a perfect example, right? So, we, what was that? I forget what tournament we played to get each other at, but it came down to, we both murdered the crap out of each other, and the last order of the game, I was throwing a. Uh, I walked my intruder HMG across the table and chucked a grenade at your box carrier on the roof. And if right. I landed the grenade and killed your guy, it would have been a zero-zero tie, which was like on brand for our day of the way it was going. 
But yes. um, it ended up being a 6-0 win for you, right? That's right. That's uh, right. And I was so, just like, this is like, it just, this illustrates that it was an otherwise an incredibly close game, but the, the score did not reflect that. Uh, yeah. And, and this is still going to be pretty swingy, right? So if that's the case, you have a 1 so 0 like box totally lead on me. Box. If you have one box, it's going to be a 4 0 victory for you. Yeah. Right? Which is, it's which is, is better than a, than, than a full on 6 0, because in the current tournament system, that would be, you know, uh, a five five TP win, right for you just yeah. for having one box to my zero, uh, which is which is still which is still nice. Yeah, exactly right. So as Clint says, no offensive point for the for the five uh, OP or more. So I, I, I think that it also means that if your opponent is able to scrape out those two classifieds, uh, it gets a, them one TP for the uh, you know the right. defensive bonus. Yeah, exactly. So if you yeah, that's a great point. So if you can't if you can't pull the uh, if you can't pull the the box away from your opponent and there's just like stuff in the middle or something, uh, it's it's you can actually get a four two loss, which gives them four TP and you one one TP, which is which is good. Um, it doesn't it certainly doesn't fix the issue. Much like we just discussed with Power Pack, the changes don't fix the issue, uh, but I think it, it gives you more paths to victory, and this definitely sort of reduces the point differential, which is nice because uh, it it. Keeps you in the running for tournament standings, I think, a little bit better. I mean, it means that you're you're running at uh, a lower like winning threshold um, yeah. of keeping your opponent, you know, at a uh, you're with the the old system. You could have what six points um, pretty easily, mm -hmm. uh, whereas this you're you're still only getting those four. So yeah, yeah, you still can't really tie in this one. Um, it's hard to. So, I don't know if you can. Because even you can if, they, both, if they you have, can both have a box, right? Sure, sure. You can both have a box or both have no boxes, right? Um, but yeah, it it really, like I was saying, it, the math. I don't think it's good, it would ever change who wins the mission, but I think it just prevents the one box to zero boxes being a six zero. Like that's that's an out, especially in a tournament. You know, in the the tournament scoring format, that's huge. I mean, like like uh, Zammers is saying, right? It's not really fixing the issue. It's just close game score lower, which is which is fine. Um, yeah, it's a step in the right direction. Um, I guess this is something we should expect from CV CB, right? They're not going to make like huge dramatic changes. They're going to take things very slowly, collect data, um, and see what the shift looks like. I mean, and they're they're clearly paying attention, right? Like the changes they made to Power Pack uh, directly address not entirely but directly address some of the concerns we've voiced uh you know who's to say if they were paying attention to us specifically but presumably they saw some <laughs> some some feedback in some form maybe from us or from other people or just from tournament data or their own play testing that said they needed to make a change so um yeah right they were able, it, they were able to see the math in action and be like huh this yeah. math is really great very cool so what other missions have gone through that's that's basically it. Everything else is more or less the same, right? So we talked about you know things losing localized decompression, getting the various terrain things back. It's just it's just like what what new toy they have. There's certainly uh, things you can think about, like what do I do with this new motorized bounty hunter in this mission? Um, usually it's go right, fast push right. button or something. Like it's 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 not a bad thing. Uh, I I do think uh, I guess just generally as somebody who has played a lot of bikes, and I don't know if Aaron, if you want to chime in with any any hot hot tips for for folks out there listening um you know it, it is it is very uh tempting to aggressively run your bike out especially now you're like it's got mimetism and it's got it's got the ability to be in cover so it's going to be on great odds and firefights and stuff like well sure but pano exists right so you 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 will you will yeah exactly right the mimetism minus three is not going to save your ass as aaron says so um yeah like there are there are more durable, no question. They are very fast specialists, no question. And you should treat them like fast, fragile specialists with a little bit of veneer of defense, right? Like uh, I see them as being able to respond. They're like either you can think of them either as a rapid reaction force to apply pressure or firepower, depending on what gun you have, quickly, which is nice. Uh, certainly, things like the Lawkeeper are very interesting now, right? Um, yeah. So. Those are those are good, uh, but I, I don't I don't think this is a, like 
I, I guess the, what I'm trying to say is I, I believe you will be disappointed if you put a bike on the table. Like, and you, like if you've never played with bikes before and you're like, no, I've got this MBH. I'm going to put it on the table. It's going to ruin everybody. And I'm going to be in the deployment zone, chain rifling everything. Ah. Um, yeah, so that's probably not what's going to be happening. That probably won't be your experience uh, unless you're playing in a field of like very new people or something who aren't, who aren't used to that kind of aggression. Um, so, you know, if you play them carefully, they will really reward you by able by being able to thread the needle. Um, don't be afraid to hold your bike back for even the first two turns. Uh, that speed will absolutely pay for itself in spades when your order pool is depleted on the third turn, when you really need to get that button press in or something like that. That's a big deal. Um, so definitely think about that. Bikes are really good counter strike units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When somebody when somebody overextends a unit into the midfield and isn't watching its back as well, or you know, there's an angle you can get on it that's really nice, that bike can do that in in its one order, you know, yeah. in its impetuous order or in its own regular order. If you're uh, going the route of cover, which you might want to, um, yeah, yeah, you might get so, something cool on the booty chart as well. Uh, if you are looking for some concrete examples of what to do about. Uh, do with bikes, you can go check out all of my JSA battle reports on mercurycon.net. I talk a lot about it and how they, how having bikes and, you know, doing stupid things at the beginning with them and learning how to hold them back and like be very judicious with application of them changed my play, not just in JSA, but other factions as well. Uh, of course, Erin yeah. is uh, the latest and greatest champion of bikes. Uh, so if you want to talk to her about it, you can it's join us. Disciple. On... Yeah, right. If you... <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, uh, she's, she's definitely doing just fine on her own. I, I provided some gentle guidance occasionally, but I don't want to take any of her accomplishments away from her. Uh, but yeah, you can you can definitely talk to us on the uh, Dice of Buy Discord. You can go to latenightwargames.com, join us there, and we'll talk talk your off about bikes, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I mean the the other thing is 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 uh, interesting discussion about uh, about armor, right? So um, certain things have very high armor, right? So arm seven bikes in cover sounds great. Um, whether or not that's worth losing the extra order from impetuous is, is a different story. Um, I will it's say debatable. it's very the story debatable. Is yes. Sorry. <laughs> so the that? story is yes. The story is yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I think, I think it is, it is pretty, pretty dependent on the bike as well as your play style with the bike. Um, certain bikes, which are very much intended to be stuck in and fighting, uh, I think it actually is okay to lose the impetuous, right? Because you can leverage, you are intending to pump orders into that. So the loss of the order isn't going to be a huge deal. We're well, I think the thing, this is, this is where I think a bit though, is that uh, you're generally, if you're, you're going to be playing a bike well, you're generally not going to be using that impetuous order in the first turn, unless you are able to deploy it in a way where it can't be seen. Sure. But usually that point where it can't be seen is further back in your deployment zone. So now right. you can deploy it further up in your deployment zone and have it move when you sure. want it to and keep retain those uh you know those impetuous or, or the the cover um and that can allow you to do more things like I'm thinking of like the Montessa being able to jump off its motorcycle uh to go go up in, on top of a building and things like that to go and attack somebody. Sure. Uh, you know, it's still able to get cover while it's up on that building, which I think is pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think you'll see you'll see warband bikes for sure. Um, I think probably will still want to keep their impetuous order. Sure. But I think that when it comes to the the non warband bikers, so like not talking about coom bikers and desperados, right? Like those are kind of doing what they do. Um, but Mavericks, holy hell! Like that's a tough decision for me because Mavericks right now we were using that. And pitch disorder to deliver free smoke. Sure. Right? Like somewhere else in my army. Um, same thing. Or uh, dynamos. We're going to be yeah. an interesting, similar boat. All right. Now, here's the big question Yojimbo. Ooh. Yojimbo and cover is pretty rad. Yeah. I mean, Yojimbo, I don't, I, I mean, I could go either way. I don't yeah. know that it would often matter um, because I'm, generally not using that impetuous order unless I've already killed everything else on the table that would be able to shoot at him. Um, but he's also somebody that I drive right at somebody's face. So him getting cover is not necessarily going to be
be much help in that situation. Right. Yep. Um, so that one might might have a little bit more of like a shrug. I don't that's know. A, Flip a that's coin. A, that's a debatable one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I think the answer to that one is is very table dependent. Yeah. Like if there's if there's clearly a spot where like I could be in cover and and be shooting as burst two contender and stuff, I might I might do that, which is a bonkers thing to say, but you know. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I think I think it does uh, open up a few a few interesting questions. Uh, I'd be curious to hear what people think about it. Um, you know, you're just just because it's not a Bromad Academy mission or something doesn't mean I won't post a battle report. So if you have thoughts or you want to share them and post them and have me publish them, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, exactly. You get to choose a deployment. So as, as Isaac is saying, right. So just, just pick what you want and do the thing. Um, it's, it's really up to you, your play style. Uh, really just, uh, I, I think the big takeaway is um, even though it's free, that doesn't necessarily mean you should treat it as expendable. Right. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people will be like, oh, "I got a free thing. I'm just going to missile it and see what happens." And then, and then, like, they won't get the results they want because they got a, they took a bad hit or something. Um, so, I, I think you'll be a lot more pleased if you are careful with the with the bike and 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 uh, and leverage its speed on subsequent turns as opposed to blowing your load on the first. Yeah, it is the I played poorly. This unit is bad. But if you roll that HMG, just run it into everything. It's great. Yeah, right. No, it's an HMG. It goes fast. Go. Zoom, zoom. Even uh, the yeah. possibility to get the HMG or the multi sniper is a little bit like, I probably won't ever deploy the uh, the biker impetuous. Just for that that possibility. Yeah, like, right. yeah, because you roll up, you get that HMG or that sniper rifle. Suddenly you've got a bike in cover across the table. It's so cool. I don't know. It is cool. Well, let's, take a look. Oh, uh, let's take a look at what happens first. Bike. Uh, the booty uh, has to happen uh, after you decide. It specifically calls out rolling booty first. There no, it calls out choosing oh, first. Right. Uh, deploying. Yeah. That. Choosing whether you're losing your cover or not. You're impetuous yeah. or not. Yeah. Because it didn't want people. I think think they were at least wise enough to see that. And they're like, hmm. Let's let's not have that happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but at the same time, they're giving you a free Red Fury on a bike. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's pretty good. But then you roll the HMG, and then you're like, I have two good guns, and now I feel like a fool. Why well, did I, I mean, waste my then, But that's great, though. You shoot at you shoot at things that don't have shock immunity and multiple multiple wounds, right? With the Red well, Fury, and you shoot at things that that do it or have armor with the with the HMG. In a range, range, right? Then 16, fire that at Fury. I mean, the, the real thing to remember is that you can still take a eight point uh, chain rifle one or chain Colt. Sure. In a lot of those armies, yeah. you know. Yeah, there's a lot of open questions, right? Like, does it account for points in terms of calculating retreat? Uh, the free one, anyway. Let's see if there's any guidance. Probably not. Mm hmm. Okay. I'd say it doesn't count, count as points, so no. Yeah, I mean, without applying cost or SWIC, right? So if it doesn't apply cost, then it's, I, I would rule that it costs zero, zero. Yeah. There you go. That makes sense. I'm on board with that ruling. Yep. Boom. Half of being a TO is just walking up and assertively giving an answer. <laughs> it, is, it is just making up whatever you, you, you want to do. Yeah, right. The... The secret is out, and, and Clint is unhappy, but it's okay. <laughs> well, cool. I is, love you, Clint. I'm trying to think, like any other big. I mean, there's. I feel like that we could probably do in the in the not terribly distant future an episode on just talking about bikes and going through the different bikes and the different factions because like there's so many different tricks and that you can do sure. now. Um, I mean, just the Aragato Killer Hacker is just the uh, just the newest. All right. Well, if we if we do do that episode, you're gonna have to make a uh, like a like a BMX tricks thumbnail or something. Oh yeah, extreme <laughs> with the X Games, no, whatever it is, right? No E, just a really big X. Yeah, yeah. When it gets fact, we can get fact with Clint. There we go. I guess <laughs> the real question is, what happens in Annihilation when it dies? <laughs> sure. 
It's not. It's zero points. It's not annihilated. Yeah, doesn't yeah. count. Can't right. annihilate it. Um, oh, yeah, I just take the most expensive one because it's the best, obviously. Uh, I don't. To answer the question in chat, I, I'm not sure when the uh, the the fact is scheduled to drop. So. Uh, yeah. No idea. Yeah. No idea. If they've said anything, we we haven't seen it. Um, but Zonautica are great. Uh, I I would I would uh, encourage you strongly to play them in Vanilla Nomads. They are probably my favorite specialists in Vanilla Nomads because they go real fast and they do all the things. So them getting terrain seems like a, a lot of fun to me yeah. too. Anyway. Does it? How, yeah, that will be interesting. What does that apply to both the the rider and the bot? Uh, or is it only the bot? Not sure. Not getting impetuous or getting cover, you mean? Yeah, the uh, no, the uh, like the mimetism. The well, I think they both already have uh, mimetism. Yeah, and they I do. Think it specifically says troopers mounted on a motorcycle or an AI motorcycle can benefit from mods for partial cover. So troopers mounted on the motorcycle. So okay. I guess that would be not the motorcycle. Right. So what about the? Um, oh, 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 oh! Specifically. Okay, so I think I think when you when you break them up, they're no longer motorcycles, right? They become the right. So like yeah. the the, uh, the, bo- the motorcycle okay. becomes a robot, and the dude is, has always been a dude. So now they they're no longer impetuous. So they because they're, and they're also not on a motorcycle, so they both get cover. And this is just saying that when the dude is on a motorcycle, motorcycles specifically don't get cover, and impetuous things don't get cover. So you have to like tackle both of those things. I see. Yeah. Zonautica mm-hmm. are great. Probably one of the, the best Nomad units to come out in recent years. Uh, just because it, it does everything and goes real fast when it does it. Yeah. yeah look and, cool. and just launching that uh, that bot out eight inches to go chain rifle something around the corner is... <laughs> it's very fun. It's It can be surprising. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I'm just stoked about Mavericks. I'm thinking like, man, now my, we have Mavericks in cover with MSV shooting through smoke with light rocket launchers i want that no That's... it's okay i'll just bring carlotta on behind and break a rifle you all yeah i think what'll be really interesting to see is the uh how many people start really taking those msv2 units again sure right or I mean, I mean, msv1 really MSV1 right like one, msv1 is good two, enough but... yeah, the, yeah the 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 biggest thing is just to to uh use hollow hollow mask and uh and pretend to be a MSV2 unit and make them go through all kinds of gymnastics to not get shot and then reveal that it was Patroclus all along. Well, the, uh-huh. the real funny thing about yeah. MSV1 that I was actually just thinking about is uh, depending on what you're shooting at, you're probably better off just letting them go because uh, they're shooting back at you uh, just as as well uh, if they're yeah. shooting if you're shooting them through smoke. Mm. And if it's a desperado, then they're like, I've got six cents. I'm shooting better than you. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just noticed, Defuck, none of the factions I'm collecting have bikes. Well, you get free bikes now. So there you go. None of the factions? I mean, I, oh. I, 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 you probably you probably get some like, motorized bounty hunters and something or other, right? Yeah, right. That reminds me, Obi, guess what? You have not painted your full Toha army. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, the motorized... Yeah, you know, I, I don't count that because uh, I'm not expecting it to last. Uh, last after the season? Yeah, the season. And, uh, you know, CB can fight me. <laughs> there you go. Or they can leave it in. This is my challenge to them. They can prove me wrong. This is yeah, me right. fighting at the forums on the, the talk show. <laughs> you'll, you'll paint it if it's in there for season four, uh, season 14. Yeah. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's fair. I also have a already painted one that I won at uh, Adepticon, like my first time I went there, so. That was the year where for the best painted, they give you a painted model by somebody else. Uh, no, I think it was a prize for just winning, so. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so I was actually running that last weekend, which was pretty fun. I was like, yeah, I get to do something with this. It's not just display, it's practical. <laughs> Right on. Okay, uh, John, before we take off, is there a drawing we have to do? There is. Uh, there is a Brahmin oh. Academy drawing left. So thank you for those of you who wrote in for last last month's mission about um, uh, 
uh, the special missions, right? So that's the special mission competition, sorry, custom mission competition that CB was running. So I asked you to try them out and write a battle report and three of you did. So if you want to see some cool missions, uh, you can go check out what uh, Tim, Jordan, and Eric wrote up and let's uh, give something to them possibly for their hard work. So we'll spin this up real quick. boop a doop a doop Yeah, sorry, Clint, half written doesn't count. Hey, it's Eric. Congratulations, yeah. Eric, for, Congratulations. Uh, for being selected by the Wheel of Names. Names, names. Wheel of Names, 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 names. <laughs> maybe I'll, uh, maybe John, I should get you some of the um, Fort Schwarzenegger patches to send out. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Get people extra patches. Extra patches. Oh, man. Well, that's uh, ITS 13. Not a yeah. lot of changes. Some subtle changes, but basically it's like a few small, interesting changes and motorcycles. So, oh. I yep. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Hit that outro. Well, you've wasted another perfectly good evening listening to Late Night War Games. All oh, right. No, you're perfectly good evening. <laughs> it's gone now. You ruined it. So remember to write into mailbag at late night with any questions, comments, fan mail. Uh, you can you can send us all send it all anything you might want us to know uh, boost Adam's ego all that good stuff. And we've got some Bromid Academy missions for you to do if you play Infinity. We've got some Lumbering Sprocket missions for you to do if you play Heavy Gear. Both of come both of them come with prizes. Um, we're here every Tuesday at 30 p.m. Pacific. That's UTC minus uh, seven. We also have shows on Monday and Wednesday to do um, uh, sculpting and painting. Right. So the lovely Obi who's right here with us right now does Mondays and Frank who is in chat does Wednesdays. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Tim and Clint doing Tabletop Throwdown on Sunday mornings at 10, minus 7 UTC. So, um, yeah. So just a reminder that Frank has painted up that lovely Vostok, which we're going to be raffling away for charity. And we should expect some uh, some traffic on your social media platform soon about the details of that. Yeah, uh, I'm actually we'll... just waiting to hear back from the charity that we contacted about it and uh, get their information so we can run a raffle in their honor. Yeah. So that's coming Thanks. soon. As soon as we work out all the logistical details, then we'll spam you all about it and tell you exactly how you can enter and buy raffle tickets and all that good stuff. Uh, and then we will send that Vostok on its way once we have the winner. Um, yeah, so of course, thank you to all of our late-night war gamers on Patreon who help us do all this stuff, uh, get everybody who who's on the show uh, and all the various um, shows we run, all the equipment they need, like microphones and cameras and stuff, so you can see what Frank is painting. That's important, right? It's things like that. And of course, thank you to all of our sponsors, DreamPod9, Mythic Games, Corpus Belly, Board and Brew, War Cradle Studios, and Brutal Cities. Yeah. Ooh. Obi, you got something you'd like to plug? Oh, uh, well, yeah. I, I think John mentioned it, but I do my uh, Twitch stream uh, at 8.30 on Mondays at uh, Nehemiah 405. Uh, for the next quite a few sessions, probably I'll be working on kind of trying to create a Shazvasti rocket launcher uh, because they don't oh. have one. And uh, Frank wants one, wants one for his Guaylo. So it's kind of slow going because I'm building it up off of itself. Um, so those are a little bit shorter sessions. And then they also go up on my YouTube at uh, Nehemiah Hobby if uh, you ever want to look back at any of the other things that I've done. And uh, you can always leave comments on those videos and be like, you should talk louder and I won't. And uh, you can also uh, ask for suggestions or, you know, ask uh, for things that you'd like to see sculpted. Is there even the, uh, a, like a dossier image of the rocket launcher? Not for Shizvasti. So I'm actually working off of a, uh, the uh, missile launcher. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, there is an old HRL sculpt from like... Sure. Yeah, it's it's pretty rad looking, but uh, not quite up uh, the same not up to uh, snuff, design. Not <laughs> the modern design. Yeah. Looks yep. like he's got like an acorn with like a tube attached to it. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun doing that. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, be sure to catch us on Facebook, YouTube, and anywhere that you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment to give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Follow us on Twitch and YouTube. All of this helps us bring you the best content we possibly can. And maybe with enough Patreon subscribers, I'll remember which order to push buttons and be able to get the uh, the titles out without stuttering or messing it up. Unlikely. It's fine. Everything's uh, fine. Heineken, man. Got to you. Yeah. Hits you hard. <laughs>
the hiney just messed me up. All right. <laughs> good night, guys. Well, have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. And stay safe out there. Night. Uh, 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 uh. Won't you play games with me? And I like to do everyone. That's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. That's what I really like to do. That's what I really like to do.